Hello, and welcome to episode 115 of the Destiny Community Podcast. Um, for, so you might notice there's like two members missing. Uh, Pope is taking a brief sabbatical from the podcast because... He's going to he, be here for next podcast, though. Oh, he's going to... Uh, it's a very brief sabbatical. Then. Um, <laughs> and then a longer sabbatical oh, after that. Yeah, and then and then a longer sabbatical after that. And then Watts isn't here uh this this week because the power keeps going out where she's at because there's a big windstorm so if i suddenly just stop existing on the podcast this week <laughs> you know you know what happened but it's okay because this week for uh the guest our guest we have ninji you have some big shoes to fill so you got the guest and you, you're filling the shoes of pope and watts this week yeah you're How's awesome. that feel? the trifecta right there <laughs> yeah. feels uh feels great awesome great. <laughs> welcome so, Ninji, uh, for those who might not know who you are, who exactly are you? Where can people find you doing whatever it is that you do? Uh, you can find me on Twitch uh, at Ninji with two J's, one Y, which is weird because everything else is uh, two Y's. Hmm. But, uh, yeah. Nice. What do you so you're just, you're just, you're just one Y. We were misspelled yeah, that, guys. Pretty much. We did two, we did well, one sort J, of. two Y's. Did we see this? Well, two eyes is everywhere else, like on Twitter, on YouTube, oh, like okay. on everything else. But Twitch, you know, I someone else snagged that a long time ago, so I couldn't have that. Uh, yeah. Ah, I gotcha, see. gotcha. Yes. Uh, yeah, primarily I do uh, do Twitch. I used to do YouTube a long time ago, but it's too hard to do both. Fair. It's hard to do both. It is. It's, yeah. It's, it's, you got to devote yourself to like one platform, and man, it's just. Mm, yeah, it's time consuming. It's definitely good to do multiple platforms, mm-hmm. but it, it's a lot of effort. To do them yeah. to do them properly, yeah. Um. So, Ninji. So, I don't know if you get. I'm bad at doing these interview things, but um, Holtz is the best. Where I know. So, Last Wish Raid came out, and um, that's really where you started to get known. How, how long have you been playing Destiny? Like, uh since the alpha. I went to the right. E3 before Destiny One came out. All right. uh, and, and then I did. I missed the beta because I was out of town. And then I mm-hmm. started playing as soon as it came out at launch. Gotcha. So, so you've been long playing time. the game for a long time. You've been streaming for, I guess, since I think year two is when I started streaming. Okay. Nice. Okay. So you've been you've been at it for quite a while at this point. Then. Yep. All right. And uh, so then all of a sudden you got your lucky break at <laughs> last wish rate. Can you tell me what 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 that? Can you set the stage? For, for uh, okay, yeah. So it was just a normal day. Uh, mm-hmm. Just playing with my friends. We always competed in like all the all the raid races. Uh, we normally actually did pretty good for like, for example, like in Leviathan. I think we did uh, like number six or something. Okay. Uh, but yeah, just normal day streaming. Have like 15, 20 viewers, uh, and then I'm like, I'm not paying attention to chat at all or stream. I'm just, you know, we're just going and going and going. And we get to the vault, and I think we we're pretty early to the vault, and I noticed my stream started getting a little larger, like 40 mm-hmm. viewers, 50 viewers. We beat the vault, and then a thousand viewers, four thousand viewers, twenty thousand viewers, and I was just like this. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on? Uh, and then we, because we didn't know we were ahead of everybody else, we had no yeah. idea. Uh, and then that was all. Like that was when it was obvious we were the first team to to ribbon. Yeah, uh, awesome. we were in. We were in. I was intently watching because, well, I I couldn't run the raid until you know someone finished it, and then you know we had everyone had been on vault for a while, and then all of a sudden someone links me your stream. And you were at about yeah forty viewers, and you were on Riven, and you had been there for a little bit, I think, at that point. And everyone was like, "Oh my god, oh my god, they got past Vault." Uh, can I can I ask you a question exciting. real quick? How long did it actually take you to get to Riven? Uh, I don't remember how. It's, honestly, that day is such a blur. But yeah. uh, I know that we were like people have asked me this before, and this is the most surprising question: is how long were you at Vault? Because mm-hmm. every other person was there for like six hours or something yeah. tough, we were there for like 25 yeah, minutes that was a tough one like, wow. we were there for yeah such a did you solve moment. it did you get lucky like how did you get through it so fast okay so we first get there we look at it we're, we're kind of like we, everyone like you know look at it you see like a basic idea like you're unlocking this vault and so you're trying to figure out how to unlock it and so we're looking at it and initially we're like well there's only three sides how hard would it be to just brute force it so that's what we started <laughs> to do and it wasn't working at all we were dying left and right left and right uh, and then me and my friend Lunar, we were like doing things, trying, trying different things. And then it started working. And like, we thought we had figured out what the mechanics were. Like we noticed 
you know, you get the you get the gun, you have to cleanse the plates. And we just figured you had to go slam the plate to like to the right when you came out or something. And we uh -huh. it, it was working. It kept working. We just like, okay, that's it. And so like there was nothing that told us that we weren't doing it right. So that's like that's why we just kept doing it. And we right. just figured, oh yeah, that's it. It's amazing. And it just it just happened to be the right sequence. Yeah, so we literally just got you know, we had a lucky. similar experience. It's like our third or fourth run. Uh -huh. Like it wasn't that exact situation, but it was like we thought we had figured it out, and it wasn't until like the third round yeah. that we failed out, and we we're like, "Oh no!" Like, we, yeah, we got we, through we two almost, rounds, and we're like, "This is working," and then it failed in the third yeah. one. We're like, "It's not working." Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's awesome though that you guys. It's incredible. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So when you funny. afterward, like, see, so you, you, like when you realized what had happened, because I'm sure you didn't put much thought into it after once you got to Riven, right? Because you're just yeah. focused on Riven. So after you were kind of like done and you like started to like look at what the strategy was for the vault, like, yeah, I was like, Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what we did. <laughs> Cause like during people are asking us like what you did. And we were just like, we were trying not to, we don't want to tell everybody, everybody. Cause like, yeah. we thought like, Oh, we just figured out some secret. But then some people like started doing what we were doing. They're like, That's not working. And we were just like, Oh, uh, I have no idea. You're doing it wrong then. You should have yeah. done like we did it. <laughs> yeah. Yep. God. So then you got to Riven, and I want to say it, it. You got through the vault pretty quick, like because I like I, I remember like kind of hearing that you guys were like at the last boss, and it was pretty early. I want to say it was like five, six hours in. You think? Uh, about probably right? not even that much. I don't. I don't. I honestly can't remember. I feel like maybe a few hours, like two or three. Hmm. Yeah. So the and then you got stuck at Riven. Was, oh yeah, we were there for twenty hours. I feel like twenty <laughs> hours at Riven. Uh, Riven not was quite. a tough encounter. Yeah, no, oh yeah. And we were we were also extremely under light. I mean, everybody was under light, right. but we were a little bit more so because I'm the only like person. Me, me and one other person played like took off the two weeks, played the mm -hmm. entire time. But the yeah. other four of our teammates did not. So, for example, I can't remember what people's light were in that room. I want I want to say like most people were five forty, but we had a friend who was like low five thirties. Wow. Oh yeah, they were getting, getting destroyed. Destroyed by everything. Yeah. Yeah. Five thirties yeah. at Riven. Yeah. yeah, just they, one, they, they just were, one person. Yeah, they were bit right at the delta. If they were like at uh, what five twenty nine, they wouldn't have been able to actually damage anything. I think. I can't. I can't remember because I, if I remember right, the fight multiple times. Yeah, I remember. I think the fights at five eighty. So yeah, at too at too long. At, yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. What did you think about having the two weeks to prepare for the raid as opposed to I, normally? I thought it was like great. I, yeah. yeah, I thought that was perfect. And I think they'll do that from now on. But some people are like, why didn't they do it with the recent raid? Well, I don't think it's a full on raid. I think it mm. is like they want to call it a new a full raid. But, you know, now that it's been out for a couple of weeks, kind of obvious that it's. Yeah, I'll, also, there was a larger power climb back then, too. Like, yeah, right. definitely. True. Yeah. You had to get you had like 500. 300, right? Or I mean, you started at what? three something three yeah 325 three or three whatever you had you had to get to you, you had to get up to 500 Six, soft yeah. cap and then you know another yeah. light climb after that so mm -hmm. you yeah big big ups yeah 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 it was a considerable climb and it was a man that was an exhausting grind honestly it was yeah it was a new way to grind too we had to learn mm -hmm. yep basically like the but it was cool that it was very straightforward i don't think it's like there's not really like any secret way of getting light anymore it's very obvious now just do your milestones right <laughs> yeah i feel like the people who are most successful are the people who prepare yeah. for it now oh yeah right? like they yep. they save uh, they save like uh bounties that will give them power level yeah mm -hmm. how do you feel about that actually people saving power bounties and all that i don't I don't have a problem with people doing it. I wish Bungie would prevent it from happening. Like, I okay. don't blame the community for doing it. It's there. Do it. Like, why wouldn't you? But I think that ho hopefully Bungie gets rid of that because it does. There's no even playing field at that point. Yeah, I was going to say, it feels like if they want an actual even playing field, then like just what's available to you week one it should be what's there. Yeah. My friends that actually were talking about it recently, and it would be better if they literally just put a hard cap at what you could hit in the preparation. Mm -hmm. Like, what if, let's pretend, you know, in the next raid, it's going to be like 750 or something, I think, will be the next, like, cap by then, because that's two more DLCs. What if they just set, you could only get to 220, or six, 
or uh, sorry, 725. Like, what if they literally just put a hard cap right there? You, no matter what, could not get past that until the day of the raid unlocked. Oh, right, right, right. Like, yeah. I don't know if that's possible. I feel but... like they've done that in the past. They didn't, I don't think they had a hard cap like that, but they had a, they had a cap in that once you ran out of powerful things, like there was just nothing to do and people really complained about it. It's called like, yeah. I mean, like Crota, you know, people vault. had to leave the raid. and Yeah. Crota, <laughs> yeah. They, there was yeah. a hard cap on that. And also Vault, it was like you can only hit 30 with Vault gear. No, that was one yeah. of the, the caps yeah. right there. Yeah, that's true. Uh, oh, yeah. What I, was the highest it hit? Was it 29? Or was it lower than that? No, it was lower. I think it was 27. 27? Somewhere around there. Yeah, because hard mode was 30. 30. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But and then that, that kind of like that sections off people, unfortunately. And like there's the solo player base gets hurt or hit hard when there's rules like that in place. I personally like this leveling system, but I think when it comes to like day one raids, I think it would be more fair for um, for most of the people looking to compete to have those kind of restrictions for light level. That way, like, you know, like you don't have to be a full time streamer in order to to compete, which would be nice because remember, wasn't yeah. it Crota that they, it was like the, the bus drivers one? Remember that the, the German yeah. bus drivers? Was it Crota? I can't, I can't I think remember. That was Wrath. That was Wrath. That was Wrath. My bad. Yeah, my bad. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like the, literally, they were uh, bus drivers from Germany that won it. I thought that was so yeah, cool. Was yeah. Awesome. yeah. 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 That was awesome. Wrath was a cool raid, a cool day one raid because it you didn't feel light level capped. Like it Is really it? was about like just staying alive and like killing things as fast as possible. Like it, yeah. it was a that was a cool raid. Yeah. It was a lot like Scorch, to be honest. Like they were very similar. Everyone was over over light. Everyone yeah. was strong, and then it was just more of a who can figure out. Not the, everybody was over light. Not everyone. <laughs> <laughs> what for Scourge? No. Yeah. No. Yeah, I wasn't either. I had the worst RNG in the world. I just didn't. I didn't play that much, so I was still. I was. I went in at six thirty as my highest character, which is still a lot higher than some yeah. people. Went I was six thirty one, and I played higher than I was. <laughs> <laughs> I went in at six nineteen. <sighs> Jeez. <laughs> I was 631 and I nonstop play the entire week. <laughs> I did too. My problem was that I didn't, I just assumed that there would be a catch up mechanic at the beginning of the DLC. So I didn't <laughs> worry about getting to 600 before the DLC. <laughs> That's so funny. No, they put it in now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I think, I think moving forward, they really do need to put in those, the, um, those like soft level cap raises though. Oh yeah. Totally. Help. Yeah. Yeah, just well, saving stuff. Not, 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 not even for the raid. I think for for the, for the forge, general. it really. Yeah, it was like if you didn't if if you didn't grind your butt off and you came into the. It's not a DLC, right? It's it's something else. But you want to play that new content with the black armory, and you've got like look at it 40, 50 le light levels to grind before you can even interact with it. That sucks. Yeah. Yeah, there's definitely mixed opinions about it. How it yeah. feels. Yeah. I, I, I think the forge is weird because first day people are complaining it was too hard, mm -hmm. but you fixed it. But then like after three days, people are like, "Oh, remember? Maybe it wasn't that hard. We just, it's just complained too early." Yeah, yeah. Like it just took a couple days, and then because now it's it's easy. It's really it's easy. Super easy. I think there just could have been uh, there. I think a light level cap could have or a. A light level boost up to five or six hundred would uh solve the same problem. Just blues. Blues go all the way up to six hundred. That way people who aren't six hundred yet, they like to have an easy yeah. path towards it. And other people mm -hmm. can play the content quicker. Yeah. But yeah, it's kinda weird that they put the they put that in now with primes. Like primes have a huge right uh like increase, but it was like a couple weeks later. It's kinda weird that they didn't put that in right away. Yeah. But going forward, like you know, we're not getting a new raid with the uh, spring dlc but we are with the summer dlc and if you know if it stays the same for the summer dlc i expect it to go a lot smoother mm -hmm. yeah i think they learned a lot from like just the opening week of black armory if anything yeah yep. yeah the yeah. player reaction to the opening week of black armory was interesting it was you know there's a lot of neg negativity on reddit it, which normally i try and avoid but i think some of it was actually pretty constructive like it, the way to approach a because this is a very different dlc mm -hmm. than what we've seen in the past from destiny it's end game content that's being unfolded. So like, how yeah. do you, how do you like describe that? Yeah. Right. <laughs> but players want to play it. Even if they, you know, they played all the way through the dream and city stuff, but they didn't necessarily just grind to 600. Mm -hmm. 
players still want to play the new DLC. Right. You know, get access to the new they stuff. Don't, they don't want to wait three weeks for power awards to do it. Yeah. I mean, if you're in the 500s and you've seen people grind for orchids and new pulse rifles, you're like, well, I can't do that. That'd be fun. I'd like to be a Man. part of that. I don't know. I'm, NG, uh, what, do, what do you think of the Forge content? Uh, okay. I like, I love the fact that they pretty much listened to the fact that we've been, you know, cheesing strike bosses for like years now to grind the same thing over and over again. And they finally yeah. put that into the game like intentionally. So I love that. I don't think there's enough stuff. I like the Forge. I like the content, like the raids, stuff like that. I just, I don't understand why like vendors don't reset. There's so many wasted vendors in the game. Like, Every planetary vendor. What do you What do you mean by vendor reset? Like more items like, being added? Yeah, to all of those should be completely new. Like, remember year one Destiny one? How every time there was a season change, mm -hmm. everything was different. Everything was gone. All the old weapons from that previous four months was gone forever. Never yep. CBC any. Like, I I kind of thought that we would get something similar to that this time around with like that was awesome knowledge. because you got new stuff, but it was also awesome because you lost access to the old stuff, which gave it more value. Man in the future, right, in the future that you, you knew that you had to grind this season if you wanted that special stuff, you knew that you'd never, no longer get access to it. To, to look at the, you know, to look at Iron Banner and see that they're bringing back year one weapons to Iron Banner, it's disappointing in that way because, you know, I have those year one weapons yep. and, I, you know, they're valuable because they're exclusive to people who played in year one. And to see them come back is somewhat disappointing and lessens the value of those weapons and the time I put in to get them. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, like you remember the devil you don't, and the devil you know, and all that. Like those were, yeah, mm -hmm. those are relics. I remember the, I remember the devil you know. I would choose to forget the devil you don't. <laughs> you know, like the progression of it. Like it, it was interesting to see those weapons come and go, and which ones would be the highlights. And yeah, when mm -hmm. when they had like the weekly reset of um, of roles changing for the vendors, like uh, I think what was that the the final like nine months of D one or something like that. Those were yeah. those were interesting times because there was always something to check of whether or not yep. you wanted that role. And I completely agree. Like all the vendors should they, they should just re roll their gear like on a weekly basis so you can go see what roles those armor have. You know, you go check Asher. Yeah. Why check Asher? Oh, you might have a piece of armor that I'm looking for. Because the rolls and all that. Now it seems like there's these like uh, there's these good roles that are kind of protected though. Like yes, to get the best role on better devils, you have to like grind a bunch of crucible to get it. You know, or to get the best roll on, I, I, I can't think of another weapon, but like the those those high high tier roles are like protected. Mm -hmm. It does like feel that way. They're they're yeah. their own drop. You know what I mean? Right. Like they're their own piece of gear as opposed to. Like if you had a god roll on a well IS Luna, it's because you played Crucible, not because you played fifty games of Crucible and got up to level fifty, you know. And you Yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah. I think you do I think you do both. I think you could have some stuff that doesn't come from a vendor. Like like in D one, like like IS Lunas, for example, you couldn't get that from a vendor. It was only in Crucible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, that same concept, have vendor specific stuff and then have Stuff that just drops in the wild, like it strikes or whatever. Well, I mean, they, they also had both in terms of what Briar was saying, too. Like, they had trials. And if you went flawless, there were certain weapons associated with going flawless. Yeah. So that those are those uh, pinnacle weapons, essentially, that you could kind yeah. of chase mm -hmm. for like that. Yeah, it's it's a fascinating shift that they've done. Like, I, I feel like we still have a foot in vanilla D, too, to where there's all these curated weapon experiences. And not truly random rolls. There's random rolls, but it's still like you chase Outlaw Rampage or Outlaw Kill Clip right now for everything. And it's a little disappointing, but I'm really enjoying grinding for weapon rolls. I mean, I, I had like a ton of kill, kindled orchids last week. <laughs> a ton. Oh, yeah, yeah I, I, heard, I heard about your luck. Mm -hmm. I had a ton of god rolls, man. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, pretty much. Name, kindle, name kindle a combo. Name a combo that you wanted, Briar. It was the hand cannon, right? Yes. Yeah. I want uh, Outlaw Rampage. Got it. Two of them. I, I did too. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> it was the only one that I played. I got it as my first drop, and I was like, okay, I got that. That's cool. Nice. <laughs> How about Surrounded Rampage? 
I uh, didn't yeah, get that. I got two of those. Uh, I would like I would like a drop mag surrounded rampage. I didn't get the drop Ooh. mag one. Uh, oh, the, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Take your take your drop shaming elsewhere. Then how We're about the same level? How about rampage kill clip? I don't care about it. No, I got one. Yeah, I had two. No drop mag. Nice. I liked them. You need drop mag on it. Dro Did you get drop mag? Uh, well, what happened was I ended up getting a shards of Galanor with enhanced hand cannon reload. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so you know, man, Tappy had a good week. He's got that Pope Bear orange. I'm telling you, man. So something in the past like three or four weeks, it's just like. Well, except for yesterday. Yesterday was a pretty like slow day. I didn't get anything. But the day before, I ended up getting a one-eyed mask for my Titan. So, yeah, RNG's been good. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> been, 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 been real good. <laughs> but, so, what do you guys think about like the grind? Like, not necessarily like the mm -hmm. act of grinding, but like how the grind of the forge presents itself. Because you have there's like this loop that you go into of pick up a thing from Ada, complete the thing, go back to Ada, go to the forge, do the yeah, forge. Yeah, I don't love it. And I, I don't know how to improve it either because, like, at first I was thinking, I'd like this better if I could just stay at the forge and just mm -hmm. keep grinding. But then that would become very repetitive. Mm -hmm. But I don't like leaving the forge to, like, go get 10 headshots either. Mm -hmm. hmm. Like, so I'm, I'm not exactly, I'm not exactly sure how would I improve it, but it doesn't, like the fact that the three forges are so mechanically similar to me is a little bit disappointing. I'm not disappointed in that what do because you mean? <laughs> I'm not. What about the Hydra and his shield? So the only reason I'm not disappointed in that is because it's a grind. And if there, if it was like, yeah, you know, it's it's why like Riven it doesn't feel exciting to do proper every single time because it's a bit of a chore as opposed to just using rockets and blitzing it. Like yeah. if. If the if the end boss or if there was like a, a mechanic that really required some serious team interaction in the forge every time to clear it, then the grindability of the forge would be questionable, and a lot of people would be complaining about it. So I I think for grinding, I, I think they've they've actually struck a pretty good sweet spot for it. In that essence, I just for clearing it. But the, yeah, the the only thing that I don't like is that you have to. There's just a lot of loading. And yes. traveling involved in the grind, yeah, like and you get on consoles, that's even you, amplified oh, that's, more than what. And you get stuck in the yeah. tower too. That's so annoying. Yeah. yeah. What about like <laughs> how you can't fast travel to any forges? That's also kind of strange. Mm -hmm. It's a little weird. Yeah. I know that. that mm -hmm. I know that's a complaint because they're in completely new areas. So yeah. Yeah. Getting getting to the new one is. Uh, I mean, it's going to take you a. a <laughs> it's going to take you a minute or two. To to get there, you gotta you gotta do all the slow walking through all the crevices. You gotta mm -hmm. from wherever you spawn in. It's it, it takes a while uh, yeah. to get to some of these, and that that is uh, another thing. It's like I had I had like an hour before the podcast, and I was able to get three, uh, three three bo uh, bows to drop or to try to get three different rolls on them. And it's like, man, I had an hour and a half. I was only able to get that accomplished. That kind of sucks. Hmm. Hour and a half. I would have you didn't be. feel like it was rewarding. Uh, no, no, no. I, f I felt like I I liked the grind. It was just like it feels like there was so much stuff that just didn't need to be there in terms of keeping me there. You know, like just basically having to go back and forth to Ada. Like if we yeah. had to go to Ada to pick up the thing, and then we can complete it like in a forge activity. We didn't have to go back to Ada then to hundred percent agree. It, I think there's no reason to have to go back to her to be like I did the thing, and then she's like. Good job. Now take it to the forge. It's like, <laughs> couldn't you just freaking just there. <laughs> transmitted me that information? Come on. I brought that up. I think I brought that up uh, during at some point. But we have like this it, it, network of transmat locations throughout the, the galaxy yes. and our solar system or whatever. And, you know, we can like transport our guardians through these things. We can. We can do all this crazy shit, but you can't tell me I can't send this weapon frame and this one radiant thing back to Ada and for and for her to check my, you know, check my homework off and say, okay, now you can go get the frame. She wants to give you a grade. She wants to make sure you're not cutting corners, man. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Now I, I need to show my work. <laughs> yeah, checking class? your work. Exactly. She wants She's you to your show your work, <laughs> man. How did you arrive at this solution? Did you copy it? <laughs> <laughs> if given the chance, I would have. 
Yeah, that, mm-hmm. I agree completely. Like, I mean, having to go back to Ada every single time to like say that you're ready to get the weapon is really annoying. Um, but honestly, but I don't know. I don't know that I want to stand there in in the forge too and just do it over and over again because the forge to me is a little bit repetitive because it's three rounds of doing the same thing. Mm-hmm. You know, I guess so. Well, there's the boss round at the end, but it's like. Like like going to the blind well got repetitive because you just stay there and do the same thing. I was done with that the first week. Yeah, blind well is pretty boring. Blind well was the best with uh, Telesto. Yes, oh, I love Telesto. They should have never nerfed that. Yeah. It was fantastic. Yeah. By super quick. <laughs> I mean, the fact that there was no like specific weapons in the blind well like killed it essentially. Have we tried shooting before <laughs> <laughs> with Telesto? <laughs> That's a good question, dude. Let's do it. Dude, Let's do it. Someone out there. Find it now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll be honest. Like, I think the the loop for grinding with the forge is like one of the best grinds we've ever had in Destiny right now. Like it. I agree. Yeah. Intentionally, at least. Yeah. And then intentionally. Again, like, yeah. Intentionally. We have grind. mind benders and we've had other things that we've mm. done perfectly, but they weren't intentional. Yeah. Like grasp of Malik. Something. Right. Like, exactly. It, there, there's a lot of parallels. And the right Maga there. loop. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a ton of them. Yeah. And I like I, I would love to see more of this. Like the the only criticism, like aside from the Ada loop, having to constantly go back to the tower and get stuck in loading screens. It's super annoying. Uh, the only criticism is that it's so minimal right now. And I'm mm-hmm. pretty sure it's going to be continuing to just be two week or two weapons yeah. a week. I don't see that expanding I to a whole agree. list anytime soon. Like, I think yeah. it's going to be like if you want that Kindle two Orchid. It's going to be one week out of every month that you could possibly grind for that thing. Kindled Orchid Week, baby. Let's go. Exactly. Like I, it's I, like I, I like that excitement. Oh, yeah. I like that excitement where it's like, hey, it, there, it feels like there's going to always be something to do for the most part or to grind for. But at the same time, like if it just happens to be like, oh, I can finally play this week. Oh, it's not the week that Kindled Orchid is available or something. Yeah, or, that is kind of a problem because if I want to take a week off of Destiny, then I got to wait three weeks for my... For the thing that I missed that week to come back up. Easy that- solution. Don't take a week off. <laughs> mm, I mean, sometimes I'm going to want to take a week off. Nope. Like, can't have it. Sorry, bro. Like, some other game comes out that I'd really like to try. You know, Red Dead, th- this fall, I thought was like, it was just so packed full of games that I really wanted to play. Red Dead Redemption 2, uh, Assassin's Creed. Like, there's mm-hmm. just a ton of games that I, I wasn't willing to just not play, right? In this, in this, paradigm like there's gonna be weeks where like i have to wait until that week comes back around to get that weapon yeah i mean it's a, assuming it's a weapon that i want that's how it's been for the uh, the dungeon anytime somebody wants to like yeah. uh do the dungeon they have to wait three weeks you yeah. know really i mean that's kind of started with the sleeper quest right um not a sleeper the whisper yeah whisper started that oh, way but it was every week at least like the fact that the dungeons every three weeks i was like damn we Every three weeks, then all right. Well, and that it looks like they're kind of continuing this process. I hope the new one, assuming the Niobe Labs is a dungeon, uh, uh should read the TWAB. Read <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's not. Oh, I didn't, yeah. I didn't look at the TWAB today. Oh my god, you call yourself the member of a Destiny community I podcast, was messing with the new synthesizer. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not gonna lie. I was I twiddling think, knobs. <laughs> um, okay, interesting. Wow. Yeah, uh, here, direct from the top, Ni- Ni- Niobe Labs is set to go live on January 8th. It is not a dungeon, but an event that will ultimately, <laughs> ultimately unlock what the final forge. <laughs> I'm, glad, right. I'm glad. Not a I'm, dungeon. <laughs> it's not a dungeon. There you go. Um, That's bummer. Man, I love the dungeon. I want more. I think it's one of the coolest things that they've ever done in the game. Mm-hmm. Bummer. Well, I, th- I think that feedback has been a lot heard loud and clear and hopefully they're working on more dungeons that'd be sweet yeah exactly um so i was gonna say uh with the gameplay mm-hmm. loop of the forge something that would be amazing is if they added armor that could potentially roll enhanced perks so you could do mm-hmm. like the grind not just for the weapons but like pieces yes. of armor and all that like i mean i would totally be chasing stuff in there for them I'd love Mm -hmm. to see armor take that next step into having like synergies and, you know, like Diablo esque kind of like power upgrades. Like, so it's not just a light level upgrade, but now you're like, you've got synergies that all of a sudden give you like, you know, like a much more powerful super or something like that. Mm -hmm. Like, that'd be 
amazing. Like an like an exotic piece of armor. <clears throat> um. Yeah. Yeah. Like uh, getting okay. your super back from hitting a bunch of stuff with your blade brush. No, that's kind of boring. Well, you, <laughs> no, I, I okay. So I I thought <laughs> I you were gonna you. say like no, getting your super you back that, yeah. faster. That is boring, actually. Yeah. But to like to have like an armor set. Imagine you had a armor armor set that you know transformed your super into something slightly different. Yes, like, I would love this. You know, and there was different armor sets available from different locations, and you could customize like how your character played based on the armor set you were wearing. Like, like, and then mix and match a exotic into that armor set. Like sets in Diablo, literally changing your perks. Yeah, that's what I. Yeah, like Diablo, I think is real good at that. Mm-hmm. Um, there, there's other games that are really good at that too. Diablo springs to mind right off the bat. Yeah, Diablo is kind of like built around that stuff. Uh-huh. And then the grind becomes okay. I want the weapons that I want, but I also want the armors that are getting the armor that's going to let me play the way I want to play. So right now, like you could get okay. I, I really want a fast hand cannon loader, and I really like extra rockets, and it, it's it's it impacts the way I play, but in a very minimal way. And like you don't see it visually too often. I guess you do with exotics, but it'd be nice if there was exotics, but there was also like a set bonus and a set like. The set actually changed your character in some yeah. way. More interplay between the perks and all that. Yeah. And so, I see, you know, I see chat saying, oh, that'd be so balanced in Crucible. Just disable it in Crucible or whatever. Do something in Crucible that, you know, or, or just allow it in Crucible and just accept that Destiny's Crucible is always going to be a mess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what they should and, do. And just like embrace that mess, you know? <laughs> So I, I thought of something when when I was doing my breakneck review. You know how we always say, "Man, they should balance Crucible and like, or they should balance PvE and PvP separately." Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. That, that's the okay. And breakneck is that does just they did that with it because if if breakneck they've performed, always done it to some extent uh-huh. by just having perks that say against minions of darkness. Well, always as in. Back in like the first year of D one, and then they never really did that. Yeah, okay. That. Um, I mean, the stuff stuff is balanced differently, but this is like the first time where it's been a huge drastic difference for the most part. Because like, I don't, I don't know if you got if any of you have breakneck yet, but the way it works in PVE, it's a lot of gambit, friend. It, it is. It is. <laughs> and let me tell you, it's it's worth it. It's really good. I think um, I'm nine games away from getting it on my hunter. Okay. Well, you should definitely you should definitely go try to get it. Um, it it ramps up its rate of fire, and then it also adds rampage stacks to it, so it just hits harder and faster in PVE. Well, in PvP, it basically just hits faster, but it also has rampage stacks, but not to the same degree, or else it would have like a point one time to kill. Hmm. Uh Okay, I don't, know, I don't know where I was going with this, other than like balance between PvP and PvE. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, it, I don't know. They, that's the first time that it's really been been shown in D two, I guess, to 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 that extent. Yeah, it just does like less bonus damage, right? It, for the most part, it 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 goes up in archetype, but it doesn't have the the same increase in damage that you would normally find in PvE. Uh, so I didn't watch your review, but it rips in PVE. Yeah, no, it's great. Is that and correct? It, it, yes, I saw but it. Then, I saw mm-hmm. it on my YouTube playlist. I just didn't get a chance to click on it, but I assume that it rips in PVE, but it's dialed down a bit in PvP. Mm-hmm. And yes, that's great. Uh, that's, dialed down heavily, or else it would be like the only thing you could use. That's mm-hmm. perfect, though. That's what that's what you kind of want out of you know you want crazy ass weapons in PVE that don't that are dialed back in PvP, right? Mm-hmm. Or you can just allow them into PvP and just accept that PvP is just going to be a unbalanced mess. Which Laser trials know. weekend. There we go, baby. Yeah. Get that. Okay, so <laughs> how, how's this for a segue? Who's unlocked uh, the new Forge? I'm sure we all have. I have not. I have not done it. I've only watched videos about it getting done. Mm-hmm. I've been mm-hmm. doing Christmas shopping and decorating the house with lights and doing all sorts of fun holiday stuff. You should decorate your house with some Vex Minotaurs because you're gonna need. A lot I of those. so I have like started the quest, uh, right? Okay. And I like ran into that quest to you gotta like kill. Is it twenty, ten, or twenty Minotaurs? Twenty. 20. 
Yeah. 20 minutes hard. And they're like specific locations that mm-hmm. you got to get them at. I'm like, basically on oh, this. I've definitely got better shit to do than this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My, mine was great for me. Like I, I got the thing to drop and uh-huh. then it's like, go complete a heroic an integration event. And I was like, okay, cool. And yeah, I started not the too event. hard. Yeah. No, I started the event and then it just auto completed. Yeah, I just perfect. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> great. Shortcuts, all right. Uh, auto completed that. Where's the YouTube okay, video on how to do that? What the YouTube video yeah. explaining how to auto complete it? <laughs> uh, yeah. See, see, you get really lucky drops. I don't have to complete annoying stages of quest. That one's not that bad, honestly. You, you yeah. know where it is. You yeah. just wait for it to come up. You know, like it's what maximum of like fifteen or twenty minutes to wait for that. To oh, happen. that. Oh, that's the thing is. Oh, you only so... got to do it once. <laughs> you say that. You say that. Um, that's that's probably one of the hardest events to solo, especially in that location. Um, Interesting. I it, I had no no problem with people showing up there. Do yeah. you got to well, do it heroic, or do you just got to? Yeah, you have got to be heroic. heroic. Got to do it heroic. Okay, so that yeah. means with that particular heroic, it just means you no vex can get to the middle. No, uh, no, you have to. Oh, you got to do the center location. Plates. There's the three plates around. Unlock all three plates and then defend. Yeah, first. that's right. You that got is a hard triple to cap. Do. Yep. Yeah. If, unless you have anarchy, then, anarchy makes it pretty easy. <laughs> I'm sure that does make it really easy. Yeah. Um, and then after that, you have to complete like three more public events uh, around the solar system. So yeah. that's that's great because some it of it tells just you don't pop. like where on the map it is, but it doesn't even tell you which planet it's on, which I find a little annoying. So I'd like, hmm. where the hell is? <laughs> okay, interesting. And then, and then there's like a bunch of quest steps. Um, I actually really liked the quest where, or one of the quest steps where it, I thought we were going to just do like an inverted spire strike. Yeah. But then we had to do like this jumping puzzle thing. Yeah, with the crystals and that, all that. Yeah, they just got, it got faster and faster. It was really cool. As we went on. And I was like, oh, that was that's cool. nice. Yeah. Yeah. That was, I haven't gotten to that part. Fun. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Oh, it's, it's great. You're going to, you're going to hate yourself. Um, <laughs> all right. Don't do it as a warlock. Don't do it as a warlock. Got Don't it. do it as a warlock. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and then after that, I think you have to run like inverted, or you have to run some strike, and then you're fine. You have to. It's the the Scion strike that was a PlayStation yeah. exclusive. Yeah. Yeah. Is so, it, how, like, how, uh, Briar, I I know that your your feeling is like, oh my god, this quest is forever. I got other things I could do. Christmas is happening. No, it's only it's only the twenty minutes part that I'm just like twenty minutes I just gotta wait for these fucking things to spawn. Is is that really what I'm doing? Oh, right I mean, now? there's options it, like. If you yeah. do the public event uh, by Exos Crash, that's the Spire integration, you can knock out 15 mm-hmm. of them like pretty fast. Mm-hmm. There's a oh, okay. there's a lost sector you can go in and out of. There's two spawns all the time. Um, Obi was in chat talking about another place that he could farm them, just constantly going back and forth. You can knock them out pretty nice. quick. Um, but Holtz and Ninji, like, how do you guys feel about the quest length? I thought it was, I thought it was fine. I think people are overreacting. Other than the fact that you have to do it three times, I guess that's that's the kicker a, for me. Do you have to do it three times? Why yeah. do you well, have to do it three? You can't times? unlock it on your other two characters. You have to do it. So if you want the armor from this week, you have to do it three times. Yes. Yep. Yes. How long did it, it take you guys? It's a, an hour and a half. Like it's a good oh, at least quick. an hour and a half. Too bad. That's quick. Well, that's as long but as, that's luck. That there's that, RNG in there because of this because of the public events. That's long as the forsaken. Uh, story campaign takes right <laughs> for a second <laughs> quite, but no, war mind yeah yeah it, it took me i think it took or it took watson and i about two hours to complete it we had some rough luck with our public event spawns um but yeah no it's if you don't get good luck with the public event spawns or you're just waiting around a while it can, it can take you like three three hours maybe and yeah. on one character I, I I don't really mind it as much, mm-hmm. uh, but on multiples, it's like I'm have to take like an entire play session right. out of my week. Like I'm gonna have to take like nine hours probably to set aside to go just unlock this stuff. So you'd rather just have it once you unlock it, unlock it for the account. Yeah, not the character. Yeah, like I'm I'm gonna end up going to go do it anyway. My main worry is that like. Uh, uh, that'd be great if Bungie could, like, you know, uh, let us know about this. Access to Niobe Labs. Do we have to have all forges unlocked to get access to Niobe Labs? Whatever the hell that activity is. Because if not, 
I, I, I want to do it on all, th all three of my characters, but man, I'm going to feel real dumb if I have to then go unlock the forge on my other two characters. You know? I'm guessing you probably have to. Honestly. That's what, that's my that's my worry. The hunch is, great. yes. You're going to have to have everything. It would be great if they could, uh, <laughs> if they could you know, let um, us know, know that. I'll be honest. Like, I didn't think it was that bad. Uh, it, what, mm. I thought what was interesting is the community at, at large kind of like snap responded with it being the longest quest ever in destiny existence. And I'm like, ah, uh, no, <laughs> <laughs> like, do you guys remember waiting for war sets? Do, yeah. <laughs> do you remember this? Uh, it's specific war set. Yeah. I had to drop. Oh my God. That was a pain in the ass. Like yeah. it honestly wasn't that bad of a quest. And yeah, I do understand like the sentiment of it not need not be needing to be done on the other two characters. One thing that they're doing is that once you've unlocked a particular power frame on an account, the steps mm -hmm. change on the other characters for that. So yep. you don't have to do like yep. the full long one. I, they should have done something similar with this. Like instead of having all those things that you have to go and kill and like the excess steps, they could have just made it to where like you get the transponder, uh, you do the conflux to start things and then... Um, and then do that quest where you're shooting the um, the gems to do the jumping puzzle, and then the strike, and that would have been fine. Instead of having like the RNG of waiting around for all those public events on the second and third character, I think that would have solved it quite a bit for a lot of people. Uh, but I do think there was a big overreaction on the amount of time it took to do this quest. It's like it's not taking you a week; it's a couple hours, you know. Yeah, at the same time, it's it is doing stuff that we've been doing for forever where it's like, yeah, you have to go do these types of heroic events. But it's also you're going to shooting stuff though. That's what the it, game is. It, about. is. It, it is. And at the same time, it's like, you're, you're making me do stuff. I've already done multiple times, like these heroic events to get access to this new activity that I want to go do. Okay. Mm -hmm. It, it, it's, and, and then the fact that there's also like, a new quest type thing integrated into that with the, the jumping puzzle and the shooting crystals. Mm -hmm. And it's like, Oh man, when we finally got to that, that section, it was like, Oh, this is great. I don't mind this quest. It was just like everything that led up to that felt a little kind of, kind of boring or it was like, okay, go, go do, go run a bunch of errands. Right. To, to get here. Yeah, I hear you. And I guess like, if somebody is relatively new to Destiny, those errands are going to be really fun. But if you played the game for three, almost four years, then it's going to be like, I've done a lot of this already. It's going to be a lot of people looking up how to make those heroic, probably, <laughs> <laughs> on YouTube, if they're new. Uh, it's funny, yeah. Didn't think about that. Yeah, I mean, like, I can look at the map and I know which heroic events mm -hmm. or which events are happening just oh, yeah. on the location. I know a lot of people wouldn't have that knowledge, so they're going to look at it and be like, what the hell's what? This is taking me forever just like having to Google this. So I understand that perspective of it, of it as well. Mm. So it's where you find like a nice YouTuber who's made like an entire guide on how to do stuff like that. Do those exist? Yeah. But then you got to like sit through like three minutes of like intro and like here are my mm -hmm. sponsors. And, mm -hmm. What the <laughs> fuck, man? I just want to know like where this fucking Minotaur is going to spawn. <laughs> oh, man. Um, well... Uh, the new Forge, I think, is fun. You know, fun. Tefty, I you mentioned something that I think has been a little bit... It's been great on me a little bit, and that it's it's shooting stuff, and that's what you do in Destiny. Mm -hmm. And that's true, and it's some of the most satisfying shooting stuff that you ever do. Like, I mean, the shooting stuff in Destiny, I think, is best in class. Yeah. But it is your, it's your sole interaction with the world, and, like, is there is there any hope, like, down the line that... Like the game gets any deeper than what it is. Hold like, up now. Yeah. You throw balls. Yeah, man. You do throw balls. You I've chucked balls. a lot of balls this week and last week. It is a season of balls. <laughs> <laughs> also baked a lot of cookies. Yes. Like, mm. Lots of baking and ball chucking going on right now in the season of the forge. It, like, is there any hope that it's probably too much to ask. It's too much to hope for even, but like to have like quests that rely on more than, well, shoot this thing, you know, shoot these small things, then shoot this big thing. And the quest is complete. 
Is that is that just like outside the realm of possibility for Destiny? Mm. Mm. I think fundamentally it comes down to the sandbox again. And I don't think that's really going to change form that that formula isn't really going to change unless there's a Destiny 3 change up that's a lot more shifted towards RPG type of things. But even then, like for basic stuff, I mean, that's pretty standard for RPGs, you know, go and go and kill 10 of these type of enemies so you can then yeah. further this quest. But like, uh, so I, I don't have the background that Holtz does with MMO RPGs. Well, let's, let's be completely clear here. I have background with WoW. Don't, wow. don't pluralize that. Like, is there anything in WoW that requires more than just swinging your sword at something? Yeah. Yeah. Hell, I mean, the raids do that in Destiny, right? Like, I feel like the raids are kind of like that pinnacle activity for Destiny where it requires more than you just shoot stuff. I mean, yeah. But like, in the base game, like, just day to day, it's very little of it is more than just shoot stuff. Like it, as as an example, daily quests. A lot of daily quests, for the most part, are just hey, go kill stuff and bring it back. That's going to be your bread and butter for basically every single RPG type mechanic. Is you know either gathering stuff or killing stuff and gathering stuff. But then there's also just random ass mini games. Back in Burning Crusade, you had to basically go play Simon Says um, to unlock this certain daily quest. Um, there's uh, there was stuff in the last expansion of WoW where you had to uh, have a memory puzzle that would go on that I sucked at. It was like a five by five grid memory puzzle that you would think would be really easy, but oof, man, I sucked at it. Um, there, there's something that's grinding me the wrong way in the Black Forge, and I can't really put my finger on it. And I'm trying to figure it out, but I haven't. Mm -hmm. It's a DLC, or it's it takes the place of a DLC, but it's like. Is it? it just feels like I'm doing the same stuff I have been doing, but I only get to do a little bit of it per week to get gratification. Does that make sense? Like, I, I guess. Like I'm I mean, going out and I'm shooting stuff, but I'm shooting the same stuff I always have been shooting, but I'm just doing it in the order that this quest wants me to do it. Yeah. Yeah. It, and I mean, it's, it's, it's basically... Like without a story word. or context, I mean, we did get like a pretty cool cutscene this week, so I, I guess... More on that think, later. We should bring that yeah. up later. Yeah. Do you um, think it's because you... Uh, I think a lot of people keep calling it a DLC, and Bungie keeps saying this is not a DLC. Do you think that also I mean, it takes, it takes the place of a DLC. Whether it, yeah. Bungie wants to call it a DLC or not, it takes the place of a DLC that I'm accustomed to or you know, that would have dropped in prior years. And, you know, I, I did pay for it. But in a lot of ways, like the Forge... The first forge was cool because it was it was new. The second forge was like, oh, this is the same as the first forge, like different enemies and like slightly different. And then the third forge is like, well, this is just more of the same, and I can grind for these two weapons. I don't know, like, the, the, there's something. Is it, missing is, is it from the this lack DLC. of a story? Is it the lack of a big bad or a story type thing? You know, uh, the the story to me has always helped Destiny. Is like. I, even in uh, vanilla Destiny One, when the story was just absolutely panned by like every reviewer out there, what it did was it offered me this world of wonder. Right? It's like I don't know everything about, about what's going on here, and a lot of the stuff is not explained at all or very poorly explained. But like, there's so much to there's so much to kind of go out and like figure out, but. <sighs> I when I hear you, I hear what you're saying, Briar. Like I I hear the the issue that you're having, and again, I think it yeah I think it like stems partly from being a veteran player in that you've already done a lot of this stuff in the past, and a lot of the things that you're seeing aren't very new. So the mystery that you're searching for is like you want that like that hidden mystery that D1 had because it was still all new. You hadn't seen it, and. Like, I still enjoy grinding for things in the game. Like, hunting yeah. for this pulse rifle, hunting. I may may or may not hunt for uh, the perfect bow, but I definitely want to hunt for the exotic bow. Like, those things still interest sure. me. I do, too. Yeah. Like, I definitely want. Like, the, those things, I, I'm definitely interested in that aspect of it. But I I get the perspective of having 
played the game so much at this point because, you know, D2 isn't very different from D1, essentially. Like, there's changes, obviously, but it's still, like, fundamentally, there's a lot of the same mechanics in there. So you, you feel like you've seen a lot of that same stuff. Like, you're, yeah. you're hunting Maybe a pulse Hulk's rifle. had a point, too, with the story, because even with even though Curse of Osiris, like, a lot of people would say Curse of Osiris is the worst DLC that ever happened. But you got, at least you got a new place to patrol and look around. You got, like, the Infinite Forest, which, you know, was... I think you were disappointing in its own way. You got new characters, you got new stories. Like you, you, you got new, you got new things besides just like you got a new period, destination, a new destination. You got new things besides here's this thing that you got to throw balls at. And then you got to do it over here. And then you got to do it over here. Like, I don't know. Like I'm not, I'm not really jiving with the annual pass hmm, situation. Interesting. Okay. Like at least with a DLC, I got like some story. I got like in half of getting the new story, frankly, was the imagination that it awoke. I mean, we'll talk about that new cutscene because that awoke. I mean, the possibilities that that so, unlocks for Destiny's story are insane. So, so what we're getting right now is yeah, we're getting like this activity thing that kind of uh, evolves, new stuff gets added. At the same time, for the Forsaken story is still kind of going on in the background. Right. Every, you know, basically three weeks, we've been getting mm, a lot of, uh, well, a little more more glimpses at kind of Mara and what she's up to. Um, we just aren't getting like the big kind of tentpole thing that we've been getting in the past. Yeah. The part. I think that I think that's kind of what you're missing is that's you part know, of it. But there's also new destinations to unlock and there's new places to explore. And, you know, even though some of that stuff, like after the fact, may feel disappointing, like during when you're actually doing it, like it feels pretty good, like to actually go through and like start getting new weapons and start getting new lore and start like to unlock a new destination, to not get a new destination, to not get any new content. Like, I mean, the Forge is new content, but it's it's super limited, like much more limited than any DLC we've ever seen in the past. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, they that's basically what they they said. So I think it's I think it's what the community asked for, to be honest, because the community asked for less content, not for not, not in that sense, but the community, you know, I mean, speaking for myself, Destiny's story has always been terrible in game. It's always been kind of a joke how they've told it in the game. The okay. lore is amazing and the, the backstory is amazing. But up until Forsaken, and again, I'm not talking about Forsaken, because Forsaken for the first time ever, I thought, oh my god, they actually made a good campaign. How did they do that? Because before that, it was always really not good. And so I think that's... But I do agree with you that not getting like a new place and stuff like that is definitely weird. Like not having like new locations and new strikes even stuff like that mm -hmm. i think that's the biggest thing is like strikes and vendor refresh the season of the forge doesn't feel different from the previous season aside from a couple pinnacle weapons to chase after i think that's like the crux of it for me and it a lot of it's getting pinned on the fact that these forges are just like this one singular thing and like black armory isn't adding like a whole new destination but i i think what reading between the lines is like there's just not a whole lot else to do for you right now briar and i think that's part of it right it's part of it i mean like this is a this is a thought that i haven't thought through does sure. that make sense like it's still like <laughs> yeah. i'm reacting to like feelings but i haven't really figured out like yeah, what the for sure but there's definitely something about this that is not satisfying to me hmm Okay. It's you know, it's like, an interesting perspective because like I hear what you're saying, but oddly enough, I've actually been really happy with the Black Armory so far. But I, mm -hmm. I see the issues at hand. Like again, no new strikes, no new PvP maps, no uh no new destination, no vendor refreshes, no like no really new perks to chase out in the open world. Like those definitely affect some of the decision making that I'm doing when I'm playing on a day to day basis, because like well, I want to go grind the forge. And I do like grinding the forge, but I hear you. There is a very limited variety in the sense of new stuff for endgame. Or that chase. Yeah. that Like the chase that we're always looking for in a game. Yeah. More on this in I coming weeks, maybe. <laughs> I, I feel like I have like so much to do, though, at the same time. Like, mm -hmm. 
I'm actually like I, I agree with Tefty. I'm having so much fun grinding the weapons. And I, I also think the events are something that Bungie is really putting like a lot of time into. Like the dawning event is a there's a lot of stuff to do in that. Yeah. Like you either hate it or you don't or love it, but like at the same time, like there's so much to do. You can complete the sparrow. You can complete all the triumphs. Like for myself, I love going like completionist, going for the triumphs and all that. And I think that's really cool. Uh yeah, I definitely feel like there's a ton of stuff to do. Like mm -hmm. I don't feel like I'm forced to do all the old Forsaken stuff. I feel like I've spent the entire time doing mostly the block armor stuff. I, I'm definitely not at a loss of things to do. If you look at my director, there's all sorts of right, you know, gold lights that I need to go and you know complete to make them go out. Right? It's like I could be grinding for power. I could be, you know, I could be doing dawning stuff, but it could be it could be story i i don't know like i i'm not sure exactly what's missing for me but it, there's definitely something missing okay I, uh, let's we, we can talk about let it the, more. let those let, let those thoughts marinate for like yeah. uh yeah well a week or two and then we'll get yeah. back to it you know we'll have like the we'll have a weekly segment on briar's uh 2019 <laughs> roundup on, on briar's <laughs> opinion of of black armory and the annual pass I, well, I mean, that's the thing about the annual pass is I think it's going to take a full year to really come to a conclusion. Was yeah. this a success or not? Totally. Right. Because totally it, it, it lasts a year. It's an annual pass. Mm -hmm. Yep. So speaking of story content and things unfolding, Briar, did you happen to visit the queen this week? No, I didn't. What's up? Spoilers. Hey, guys. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, here's where here's where you'd put in like this, a, a quick is this a cut. Spoiler? All right, let's see. Yeah, here's where you'd put in a quick cut saying there's a spoiler warning coming, and then you should probably skip ahead like I let's don't do know. Ten minutes. Ten, ten minutes. minutes? Yeah, Nick. I think ten minutes is is we'll quality. try. We'll try to do ten there minutes. You go. Nick, edit well, something in there. Nick, you well, well it, it's gonna lead into uh the next the the thing next thing that they're doing. All right. So all right, so right now, skip ahead 10 minutes. I will watch the clock in 10 minutes. If we're still talking about this spoiler, I will mm. again warn you to okay. go another five minutes. How's that? Okay. Also, okay. Something, something like that. They could also go and talk to the queen right now in that time to get caught up. Yeah, that's true. If you're that's playing true. the game right now. And by All talk right. to the queen, I mean go do blind well. Yes. And then talk get the queen. offering. Right. Go so, talk to the queen. I, I didn't actually do this myself, but I know the cutscene. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The leaked cutscene. <laughs> yeah, because it was leaked and I watched it. <laughs> of course you did. Of course, of course I did. <laughs> uh, so you go, you do your offering, you go talk to the queen, and you uh, go into the chamber, the Ascendant Realm chamber, or whatever that her, her place is, and you lean over the um, the the desk thing, the, the futuristic digital desk thing, and you get this cutscene flashback type of thing, and it's of um, Aldrin, Laying, you know, like his essentially the the funeral area where he's laid to rest, and a ghost comes up, finds him, and reawakes him as if he's a guardian, and then poof, Aldrin's back. Aldrin's back. So this got leaked, right? This got le le leaked a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. This is, I think, the most exciting cutscene I've ever seen in Destiny. Honestly, it's an incredible <laughs> cutscene. It really is. Like it means. It, it could mean so many things for Destiny. Like, first of all, does Aldrin remember his past lives? How is he going to be accepted by other Guardians? Yeah, if, if he remembers his past his past life, then he is the the first person. Right, Guardians who, don't remember yeah, their past don't. lives, yeah. right? But, like, his his sister is still alive. Will she just tell him about it? Like, or will they... Will the entire universe or galaxy try and keep this a secret from Aldrin? Like... How is this going to play out? Like, it's such an interesting thing to have happen. And it's the first time that I think we've had like a, we've had like a baddie kind of like get the come light back or, or stay bad. I guess we had is Alice, well, but what means Alice was only in the raid. What, what about like, uh, well, I think it, I think you brought up a really good point. What makes you think we were good? What makes you think any right. guardian was ever a good For guy? For sure. Have you okay, seen, my, definitely have you seen my kill count on my coup? <laughs> yeah. I've murdered, I've murdered a lot of aliens. <laughs> Dude, I got like 3,000 guardian kills on my coup. <laughs> 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 
Uh, yeah, it's very fascinating. Also, um, from what I understand, somebody in chat could correct me. Uh, the the ghost is called pulled pork. Apparently, that's the yes. name of the ghost. Yes, and apparently Mara had like picked this ghost, so essentially she knew that Aldrin was going so to Mara die. Mara made this happen. Mara planned for him to be resurrected as a guardian with a, a picked ghost, I believe. Before he was dead, she planned this. I don't, or I don't know if it was after planned. he was dead. I don't know if it was planned. It seems. It seems like. Do, do we know the time frame on when she picked the ghost? Uh, I don't know. Before the events of Forsaken, I, I am, time frames are. Such I am a, a lore man. master, after yeah. all. You know, I do know everything <laughs> yeah, yeah. about the lore, but in this particular instance, I'm. I'm. Violin. <laughs> I don't know. I got. I got a. Ever since you mentioned that he was resurrected and he doesn't remember anything, I'm I'm just imagining a scenario, and this is going to go off a real big deep end here, but is it still incest if you get resurrected and don't remember that you're brother and sister anymore? Yes. Okay. <laughs> well. Okay, so he showed, okay. right, his ghost brings him to the tower. Does Porkchop know what he did? Like, does his ghost know what he did and, like, what? Like the chaos that's happening here, does this ghost bring him back to the tower? Could could a situation happen where we need a new hunter vanguard? Could it be this guy? Like, there's so much cool shit that could happen with this. Like, how does our guardian, when we first see him walking around, do we just instantly put a bullet in his head, or like, do we recognize that he's a guardian now? And and what does this mean for our guardian? Right? Like, I don't know. In my head canon, I've always assumed that guardians were resurrected because they were somehow worthy of it. But I mean, that blows my head canon oh, away. Like that, that, that's, that, I feel like that's the head canon. Uh, there's there, there was the, if you look at what the speaker said, it's like sacrifice and all this other stuff. There, there is, I think, a there, there, there's some sort of worthiness or. Thing there, but I don't... does that mean like bad actors from out history could become guardians in the future? Bad actors, like bad people, bad people who did bad things. I like mean, they committed bad acts. If if they were driven people that you know tried to accomplish you know something, I don't, I don't fucking know. Maybe I don't know. It's a fascinating move for Destiny's story moving forward, right? It's, it's extremely like fascinating. Yeah, there's yeah. so much cool You're, shit that so, comes out of like a 15 second cutscene. Yeah, <laughs> that's incredible. I also want to follow it up with um, Brandon O'Neill put out on Twitter. Brandon O'Neill is the voice actor. He was on the podcast. Mm -hmm. Amazing dude. He's the voice actor of Aldrin. He put out a video um, last yesterday of him slow-mo saying, you know, the Jack is back throwing a, uh, a Jack card at the camera. And what I is coming? What is coming in spring? Joker's wild. Joker's wild. Hmm. Mm. Very <laughs> interesting. So we're four minutes short of the spoiler warning. Are we done talking about the spoiler itself? We could go on this incest time timeline thing that I that I thought up, but it's not. But it is so. <laughs> You guys aren't having this one this week. All right, fine. Man. <laughs> I, I, I try to put an interesting topic of discussion. Listen, it's man. Touchy subject, I, you know, it's, you know I, I'm very touch and go when it comes to the lore. And I'm just, you know, I'm mm -hmm. I'm trying to verify if I said something completely incorrect, 100% incorrect about pulled pork or not. Pulled pork is definitely the name of the ghost, right? Yes, yes. it is. It is the name of the ghost, uh, at least that... Uh, it's description in the lore and then it's picture. It's it's pretty spot on. So could be, you know, <laughs> it's but, it's it extremely fascinating. Be, yes. I think like it's really cool seeing his character come back. I mean, is he going to be our new Hunter Vanguard? I don't right? think so. No, nah. I don't like, think so. He has no I, I feel like there's already somebody there's, else who's been tapped for that. There's a bunch of there's like three hunters that are, I think, prime. Like already there, but none of them but actually killed the hunter Daphne. vanguard. That's true. That's true. Daphne, imagine you had full playable control of your character, and you're walking around the tower, and all of a sudden you just happen to be walking over by the hangar bay, and you see Prince Aldrin fucking <laughs> teleport in like Star Wars, Star Trek style. What do you do? First thing I do is I pull out my fucking last word. I fucking put nine bullets in the dude's face. 
Really? I thought Last Word held eight rounds. Whatever, man. Maybe like, in, maybe in D2 point. they up it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you know something, Holtz. Huh? Uh. Uh. <laughs> no, I just remember counting the, the counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I very much remember that from D1. Like, seriously, if you were just walking around in the in the tower or anywhere and you see Aldrin, like your first reaction is to shoot him, right? It, yeah. He's the bad guy. Didn't Cade's message say that whoever kills him gets to be Vanguard? Killed him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. So technically yeah. he's the new Vanguard. Yeah. But he doesn't know anything. He can yeah. learn. He's right. He doesn't remember anything. He's gonna have to like remember how to eat food or something. Well, he's I don't know, man. I find this to be absolutely fascinating for the future of Destiny's story. Yeah. What if he sees Mara and then she's like, wow, she's really cute. And he doesn't know the history. It's Why like, are you coming it's back? It's basically like Luke thing, and Leia man. all over again. It's super creepy. It's <laughs> <laughs> fine in Star Wars. <laughs> oh, man. All right. It's 1019. All right. So it's uh, got I, one more minute of spoiler talk. I feel like I feel like we covered it, right? Yeah, I feel like we did. I just find it fascinating for like the future of Destiny and to to see him. All right, it it is now. Spoiler talk is over. It's been ten minutes. Yeah, but that cutscene I think is one of the best cutscenes we've ever seen. And I cannot wait for three weeks from now to go visit Mara again or visit the chamber because like I want to. It's gonna it's gonna definitely want to see. It's obviously gonna unfold every week. Okay, so do you consider this part of Forsaken or part of Black Armory? This is definitely. I kind of feel like it's a. Forsaken storyline. Well, yeah. the thing though is, Black Armory is technically Forsaken. It's Forsaken Black Armory. Sure. And then it's yeah, going to be sure. Forsaken Joker's Wild, and then Forsaken yeah. Penumbra. Yeah, for sure. So I, I consider like the whole arc is taking us through an entire year. Fifteen second cutscene, best thing out of Black Armory I've seen so far. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's there's that Truth and Power lore book that's not going to be finished for like thirty something more weeks. Oh Jesus. right, right. Because of because of the story, because like it's yeah. one every time you go every three weeks. Oh god. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it is. It's very exciting to see it unfold. Um, Briar, did you ever get the raid, man? The raid was the fun. What, no? The raid, the scourge of the past. Did I ever get it done? No. Did you forget about it? Because that's part of Black Army, and that was a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. It was. It's. It's a ton of fun. I love that raid. I think it's one of my favorite raids. Yeah. That's part of Black Army. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. And I, I think, honestly, that raid switches up gameplay for Destiny more than any other raid has done. Yeah. Like it, it I mean, it's adds a- so many more variables, like with sparrows and with large areas. Like, it's it's incredible. You're absolutely right. I did forget about the raid. I was talking. Okay. Just one. You know, I just wanted to point it out. Also, threat level midnight. It's pretty nice. Anarchy. It's pretty nice. Those are fun, fun guns. Yeah. I am a little bummed that like half of the weapons from the raid are the ones I want. Like I want, I like the shotgun and then I want anarchy, but then there's like this fusion rifle and the scout rifle that I'm just like, Nope. I'm yeah, not. Where's the hand cannon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Every raid needs a hand cannon. It really does. Bungie hates hand cannons. I don't know so, what it is. Yeah. Is that what's up right now? Is that the, the raid weapons are split between the forges and the raid? Yeah. And the armor as well. No. Is, is that what I'm seeing? The armor is too separate? No, the raid has an armor set, and then mm-hmm. black or the uh, black armory has an armor set. Yeah. But they both share a full set of weapons? Yes. I mean, yeah. they, they are themed. They, you are getting black arm. You are getting weapons from the black armory fr- from the raid. When you go in there. And, That's like, bullshit. The final- there should be two separate sets. Okay. And the final loot room is like a black armory, and you're just taking weapons from the crates that were stolen, you know, yada, yada. Yeah, yeah, we should totally have a full be- set, honestly. That's what's fun about chasing the loot. It's getting the whole set. It doesn't help the argument on like kind of Bungie side. It's like, oh, this is a full raid. But the loot pool is that of a raid layer. Agreed. That 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 is the one thing. I do I do think if this had a larger loot pool, people would probably be like, Yeah, no, this is a this is a raid. Yeah, I mean Yeah. It- it's it's not the longest raid that we've ever seen, but it could scrape through. It's fun. 
I think it's a mm-hmm. super fun raid. Like I don't, yeah. I don't really care if you call it a raid layer or raid. It's a fucking fun experience. It, it's a yeah, it's a fun activity. Yeah. yeah. The scale is huge. Yeah. Like yeah. You said you you have to use sparrows. I feel like when they were testing that, they probably didn't initially do that, and then they were like, wait, they're not moving fast enough. I think we need sparrows. Shrink it, it or it, give it them is sparrows. An incredible time. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Also, it feels so unique among other raids. Also, Holtz has a very weird, twisted sense of geography. When I, we raided with him, uh, was it no, yesterday? I don't. Two days ago. No, I don't. No, uh, I don't. Aside from that, you know what? Here's the mm-hmm. best way to memorize locations, guys. We need to, as a community, give every mm-hmm. street a name so we no, can call out these call is... outs. You know, first and M. Oh, sure. The guy spawned Main on first and M, guys. First and M. I need you to go over there and then dunk like on third and C. All right. Like third, third and sure. third I'll and main. Do it like New York City, where you have like the north and south all numbered <laughs> and the west and east all like yes. ABC. See, the problem with wow. that That's is perfect. then you That's just beautiful. need to... Holtz. You got to get good learning, man. I'm sorry. You just got to get well, the good. The problem right? with saying I'm just north, hearing about north, this for the first time, and it's just beautiful, like, right? Oh yeah. That's how they design fucking cities. <laughs> do you know what? Do you know what stemmed this conversation? We, we, we no, no. decided to run no. the raid this week, and Tefty came in, and I'm like, I'll read the map, guys, and then. And then, and they're like, "All right, do you know how to read the map?" I'm like, "Bitch, I tested the raid. I know how to read the map." And then all okay. of a sudden, I'm like, "Hey, the things south behind the map." And they're like, "Oh, that's North Holtz." And like, excuse, excuse you, the map? no, you, you were saying you were the saying map. North of that the map is south. was south. No, the first one was south. You can go watch the goddamn vod. No, I'm saying um, like you were you were calling what we were calling north south, and you were saying behind the map. So. I'm sorry. I, I have a question here, Holtz. Mm-hmm. Is you're mm-hmm. saying that you were giving perfectly good callouts, but the other yes. five people in your raid team had no fucking yes. idea what you're talking about? That's exactly what he's saying. Yes. <laughs> okay. And, and right, he, so wasn't budging either, he wasn't budging, man. He wasn't budging. No, I wasn't. Okay. And then it, the topic of conversation finally came up. Well, how are you basing your north and south and east and west in this? Well, there's a giant fucking tower that has the Schnell logo on that. And it's really easy to just say, that is north because that is like the 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 that is the point. That is the north star. That is the guiding thing. You know. Yeah, but you're. You, you, you feel, wait, 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 wait. Hold, mm-hmm. hold. I got something perfectly for your argument, so that you can mm-hmm. put it in their face. It's okay. also on the map labeled one. It's the Ooh. number one place, and it goes in a cl- and it goes in a perfect clock, like one, two, oh, three, four, nice. five. Yeah. Yeah. Now, so that I, is now if someone had to actually <laughs> explain that to me in the raid, I would have been like, "Oh, that makes sense." But you know, this other explanation you, here here's one of Je- Holtz's justifications for Schnell. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. He said because there's an N in Schnell, it should be. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you guys said it's south because there's an S. <laughs> Okay, no. I'm just throwing no, 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 right no, back no, 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 no. We brought that up <laughs> no, no, afterwards. Yeah, 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 yeah. After that was your justification <laughs> for it being north. I was like, "Are there's also an E for east and an S for south?" Yeah, good because God. you guys were like, "Oh, there's a, there's an S in Schnell. It starts in S. That means it should be south." I'm like, "Well, there's also no, no, a no, fucking no. N." This literally came up after you said there's an N there for north, and I was like, "Uh, bruh." <laughs> I got. I, I mean, just one more thing. I mean, I wasn't there. I, I didn't witness it. But mm-hmm. again, going back to the one person is talking and the other five people don't know what he's talking mm-hmm. about. Mm-hmm. Maybe that isn't a failure on the five people understanding. No, that is. No, that is. Maybe that means they were trained on the wrong. One person trying to communicate. No, that if you that had means brought they up, were trained wrong. If you had brought up the the one <laughs> is north and then it goes in a clockwise argument, that I would have been like, you know what, that is that makes perfect sense. Well, Briar, the thing is, it didn't end there with that first encounter. Like okay. I was able to adapt to their callouts. I was able to adapt. Def- to this callouts. next one, though, I mean, come on, <laughs> come on, bruh. Okay. The, well, it's, okay for for the boss, you wanted to make mm-hmm. spawn north. No, I no, 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 you do not twist my words. The far side of the arena is north, spawn is south. Oh, so the, the initial uh purple guy spawn is north. Holtz, you were saying sure. the opposite, man. I swear to no, God. No, I was no, no. I swear to God. No, you were, I am con- no. Then well, no. I don't even know what we were arguing about because I was literally <laughs> saying you know, left is east. Or west. Sorry. Yeah, I was saying, that doesn't. I was saying left. Up. I was saying left. I was saying left is west. 
Yeah, you swapped. I'm you suddenly swapped directions. throwing Tefty's point of view into me. Cece was there. He could back me up. You were saying where no. we spawned was north. I was like, dude. No, I wasn't. You guys tried to then say, oh, well, you spawn behind the map this time, which means that that is actually south. So it's correct. And you actually flip your call outs from the first one when actually you spawn in front of the map. So that should be south. And that's our. There's a whole bunch of justifications of like us flipping the call outs when it's just really easy to think of you're looking down at the map. Okay, far side of the arena, that's going to be north. Great. And then, and uh, it, look, it just, it got to the point that then I thought I didn't know what, what else could happen. Well, it turns out that during the boss fight, there's, you get three different buffs A, C, and P. Okay, the, there's, there's the three different buffs. Personally, I like to use C A P because it spells cap, and then A is the point Wait, of the cap. And so the umbra is when the moon like goes over. <laughs> <laughs> and then these guys come and saying it's alphabetical order because A C P, and like I get the argument, but you're wrong. <laughs> and therein lies Holtz's arguments. The, I feel like that's therein lies Holtz's attitude. There, <laughs> there, therein lies the, the crux of the situation. <laughs> well, Ninji, yeah, I need. Uh, okay, how about how about this? How about we just settle this no, no, once no, no. and for all with a third party coming in here and then just saying, "Hey, this is the way that I do it," and then that's the way that we will we'll just accept. That's the correct. I'm willing way. to accept your terms. Okay. Benji, how's it done? Uh, Schnell is north. Yes. Boss Arena straight ahead is north. But Ooh, I'm, I'm an ACP. I take I'm everything a, back. That doesn't even fucking make sense. I'm an ACP. <laughs> ACP is, it makes so much sense. It's literally alphabetical. So you just follow which, you know, side of That's, the alphabet. Yeah, and also C is for center, for God's sakes. That's so yeah, easy. A, a is center. It has the point on it, and the A forms a triangle. This is like this, hieroglyphs, which means dude. A right here, and then C. <laughs> it's just. I okay. I gave my terms. I accept ACP is fine. I accept it. I I will be a man about this. I will not. You you can't take it further. Yeah. You're saying you're down with ACP. It, it it reminds me of home. There was a there was a dish at one of the shitty Mexican restaurants called uh, Arroz con Pollo. And it was the, it was called the ACP. You just go you go in there and be like, "Hey, I want the ACP." Tafty, so. are you down with ACP? Yeah, you know me. Cool. Okay. <laughs> you guys want to do some Twitter questions? Let's do it. Uh, hold on, hold on, <laughs> Tafty. Does that mean you're also fine with Schnell being north? Yeah, actually, I'm okay with making that adjustment because okay. what Great. Ninji said Great. makes perfect, clear, concise sense, as opposed mm -hmm. to some blabber about you know, there's an N in the name that makes it north or some crap like that. I gave so many more justifications before <laughs> I brought up the end thing, but all right. But you know, I, you know, Holt, it, it comes. It starts. I won the art. Okay, starts, I won the part that I truly it starts cared with about. The I don't tone. even care about it. It comes. It comes people. down to the tone. You know. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. The the uh -huh. way it's presented <laughs> makes a big difference. Yeah, well, you know? communicate. Yeah. I mean, you'll get it. It's eventually. called it's communication skills, really. <laughs> <laughs> TMCPK <laughs> asks. Ninji and his team were hours ahead of Redeem and Math Class during the world's first of Last Wish. Give us some insight to what happened during Vault and what held you back during the final encounters. So we talked about the Vault. You guys cleared it super quick. What was the holdup during the the Riven fight? Uh, said so two things. I think uh, we we taught the entire community what not to do at Riven. We, uh, we, we figured out all the things that were definitely not the correct way of like the mechanics and stuff like that. So we we you know we were there for so long we figured out pretty much everything not to do. Uh, but being under light was was huge. Like we were, like I at like I ended up playing with a bunch of uh, people from Redeem the next day, and I asked like I was like, what light were you guys out of curiosity? And they were like ten plus, all of them above us. Like we were really under light, so that definitely hurt us. Riven also was no joke to figure out no, yeah. oh no definitely yeah, no like it it was i mean you go back and look at it it's like how did people figure this out <laughs> like it's craziness and like there's so many stages to it mm -hmm. like two teams beat it in 24 hours 
or well, one team beat it in 24 hours. Like no, two, two teams, two teams, two teams. Yeah, two. Yeah. Redeeming. That wasn't even. Or... That wasn't even it. Everyone thought that was it. That wasn't even it. Right. Riven wasn't the last thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That fight. That fight is rough to do. Like legit. And there's so many points where you can just accidentally wipe. Shoot the wrong eye. Boop. Wipe. Uh, that's basically the leading cause of wipes for the most part, I think. Just... It, it's why I value going into a raid day one, though, is blind. is because you get to figure that stuff out for your first time, not having somebody kind of instruct you. Like, to me, having somebody instruct me how to do a uh, encounter is never the same as, like, when you figure it out for the first time. It's it's so much more, it's so much more fun that first time. Mm-hmm. You know, but it also, it's it's frustrating in a way because it takes you a long time to figure out. And sometimes it could take you, I mean, what, when we did the Taken King, when we did... Uh, we had to take a break. We had to take a break. But, like, it took us a long time to figure out that fight. Like, the, it took, the it took us, fight. if I remember right, it took us, I think, 12 hours to get through King's Fall. Yeah. It was like a little bit over yeah, 12 hours. But, yeah, but, I mean, eight of those hours were on the final boss yeah. fight <laughs> yeah. we had reached the final boss fight in four hours it's so. it's usually it comes down to again light level for us because like that was also we had we had problems dpsing the chest getting enough damage mm-hmm. in there and so like yeah. i mean we had we had to swap all the like celestial nighthawk golden guns yeah one well, we actually ran through the raid again on our second characters did we yeah wow yeah. we ran through the raid again to get like higher level weapons hopefully yeah, yeah. i vaguely remember that interesting Honestly, a break is huge. I think if we would have taken a break at one point, it would have helped because yeah. we had we had a call because we were so tired. We were, I, like, I keep remembering every time you were like starting the fight, you would just do the sad pushing the sweet <laughs> emote. Yeah. Every time before you you dropped. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, I, I want to say real quick also on the Riven fight. Um, I've been having conversations about it with uh, with Chad about how like it's interesting. Riven is a fantastic fight and really fun to tackle and approach for the first time. But the reason why so many people want to cheese it is because it's a tedious fight to grind. Mm -hmm. Like there's so many, there's so many kill mechanics, you know, you shoot the wrong eye, instant kill. Um, Like when those stack up and the amount of wipes and the amount of times that like people have to be hundred percent on their game in order to, to do those mechanics properly, it like weighs heavy on people's desire to do the encounter correctly every single time. And I think that's why like, Scourge of the past is really fun that there isn't a whole lot of like this person just screwed up a part. Now it's done and you wipe like. I Is there anything right now like that? I don't think so. Like they, they made it so like not really you, you're not really punished heavily on uh, on one person making a mistake in that. And I, I think that's why Scourge of the past is a lot of fun to just straight up play because people can kind of like dick around if somebody's. Not really on top of the game. It's okay because you can have fun with the raid. But with Riven, though, if you do it legit and you don't, um, you don't do the teleport. Like everybody, better be focused because if you forgot to write down that I, well, you gotta you gotta get lucky or it's a wipe. Yeah, yeah. Or if you're if your uh, graph of what birds are called doesn't match up what my graph of birds are called. It's usually the eye call outs is like what doesn't match up. It's like you always go, hey, whatever, though. It's like, we, do you do an X where the top right is two or the bottom left is two? Yeah. Yeah. Like it's a phenomenal raid and the level of technical requirements is impressive. But in terms of grinding something, it's not. It's definitely not my favorite. Like the first three. It's an amazing day one experience, but like week seven, not so awesome anymore. Yeah. And I completely understand why people are just shoving rockets down her mouth instead of doing it properly. <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> when, when, when it came to the time, when it came time to grind light for uh, like the first week, like the first two weeks of black armory, I was like, I just don't want to, I just don't want to go through this long fight. Let's just, I actually rockets. don't mind any other fight in that raid. I think that uh, what's her name, where you, you basically chase her around like in a spiral sure. up. I think that's one of the most amazing encounters in Destiny. Mm-hmm. Like I oh, love absolutely. it. It's that's... it's fast. It's high action. It's aced well. I, like I think it's fun as hell. Like even now, like going in there, I'm like, all oh, right, it's this one. I like this one. Mm-hmm. Doughboy says, "Who thinks Prince mm-hmm. Aldrin gets shot immediately when he flies into the tower?" For the- 
It's time. Oh, it's happening. I mean, he's got a ghost, so it, well, yeah, like it's almost like you could just prank it. You know, like <laughs> every time I see Prince Alter, I was like, ah! pull <laughs> pork, hit in the res. <laughs> Yeah, everybody's doing that. Yeah. <laughs> Rock Leo says, all my friends left Black Armory due to the lack of story missions and the grind. I believe Destiny is in the best place it's ever been in four and a half years. Any words to those who lo- love Forsaken but hate Black Armory? I wouldn't look at it as... Looking at it as like its own separate thing, I think, is the wrong way to go about it. Treating it like hey, this is the season of Black Armory where there's going to be new stuff coming out. Don't look Don't look at it as, hey, here's this big new experience that we're going to give you that's like a, you know, that's like a DLC, that's like an expansion. Just, I think that's setting yourself up to be really disappointed. And that's what Bungie might have wanted to be saying before Black Armory I came out. I feel like they did that pretty, pretty well. I feel like they said it. Know. Because they yeah, they didn't same. they didn't hype it up either. It did like Black yeah, Army. People kept saying like, "Where's the trailer? Where's the trailer?" And there was none. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, there was a trailer. Yeah, but it was like no, the, there like, was only no, a, the day. There was only the dev thing, yeah. right? Or like I think the day before they dropped like a Black Army trailer. The, they dropped the vod. They're like the. Mm-hmm. They're like, hey, the forge is about to open up. Go get. Because that was for the whole year too. That wasn't just for Black Army. That was mm-hmm. the whole annual pass. So the question, oh, any words to those who love Forsaken but hate Black Armory? Uh, that's okay, in, in my yeah. opinion. That's okay. If Black Armory is not for you, like, that's cool, man. Like, I, I and I would kind of, like, let the devs know that, right? Like, if you love Forsaken but not so hype on Black Armory, like, let them know that. Like, if, and let them see that feedback and improve the next time around. Yeah. I, I've been saying it, too. Like, hey, if you're if you're not feeling it, it's okay. There's a lot of games to play out there. Yeah. We, we said that for years during just various times in Destiny. It's like, it's okay to not play. Just yeah. Go, go 20, do something else. 2018 was an outstanding year for games. Mm-hmm. And 2019, I think, is going to be just as good, if not better. Yes. Like, it's okay to take a break from Destiny. Like, it really is. Like, and to be honest with you, it took me a long time to figure that out for myself. <laughs> Uh, Raul Moreno says, have any of you gone back and played Destiny 1 just for fun? Last time I played Destiny 1 was when we did the charity stream where uh, Holtz was supposed to get a tattoo on his ass. That's mm. the last time I did it too is when <laughs> Holtz was supposed to get a tattoo on his ass. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, like conveniently leaving out Pope and part of that one just well, put all of it on me. That's Pope's fine. not here. So. Yeah, he's not here. It'd be <laughs> disgraceful to do that. <laughs> that's, that's it fine. would be uncouth. <laughs> I haven't played since then though. I don't really have much desire to go back. Uh I've I've gone back to raid like two two times since then. Just Yeah. Yeah. I've I've wanted to, but the idea of using a controller and 30 FPS is really uh <laughs> yeah. so it's not PC, been, Ninja? Well, I've been on PC since like the year three, so of D one. So yeah, it's been even longer. Wait, how'd you do that? No, like I mean, I stopped. Like I stopped oh, playing you Destiny. Stop playing Destiny you know, One and three. Started playing PC yeah, games. And started playing PC games, and then I. I mean, I. Te- I went back for the launch for the two months that we had to play mm-hmm. console. Was that your? Was that your first PC experience, or no, had I've you been, been a PC, PC player for life. years and just yeah. played Destiny on console because that was the only place it was available? Yeah. Well, I, I stopped playing like PC games when during like 360 area because that was amazing for console. Mm-hmm. It, was. it was. Yeah, that's kind of how I am too. Like, I was PC for a while, then, like, the 360 and PS3, there there was some good games, and then, yeah, Destiny happened, and was like, oh, man, I wish this was on PC, but oh, well. Yeah. And now I'm spending $1,200 a pop on graphics cards. It's, it's been great. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> Taco says, why is the Thunderlord the best scout rifle in the game? It just, yes. it just works. I mean, it... It's nice because it actually kills things, but it's bad because it takes purple ammo. Yeah, but you get a ton of it. Poor brick, man. You do get a ton of it. You get, get, get this thing called Machine Gun Scavenger. Yeah, It's real good. Or taking armaments or fallen armaments. Yes. I mean, I'm not sure what this question is trying to get at. Like, is he mad that Thunderlord is as good as it is? Does he want to nerf? Because I don't agree. I think it's an amazing weapon. It feels exotic. It's awesome. 
I think it, leave Thunder Lauren alone, Taco. <laughs> I think it probably no, comes I, I from the fact that saying, scout man, rifles suck. Scout rifles, yeah, yeah. terrible. Well, they have no place you know, in the game. Fuck them, right? <laughs> <laughs> Damn. No, 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 no. Just make pulses worse. <laughs> oh, oh no. Oh, hot takes. <laughs> Oof. Well, you are trying to fill the shoes of Pope, who usually is the most hated member. So, congrats, congrats <laughs> on that. Well. What next? Perfect. Hand cannons? Get in the can too? Huh? <laughs> nah, never. Uh, Chris Lennon says, "Should we be able to forge weapons like we bake cookies?" I mean, I feel like that'd be extraordinarily dangerous to try and forge weapons in my oven. <laughs> I mean, that is a way that you have also, to. Also, I don't know, think you can forge metal. metal at like 400 degrees. I think I bake cookies at like 350, not even 400. It, it, it's it's more of like it's, it's not going like to work. Harden, harden the metal, but okay, it's fine. <laughs> no, forging is like <laughs> like shaping the metal. Tempering is hardening the metal. Oh, where's the space magic? Sure. Mm, yeah. Could like, be in the- I. In the cookie, I, I like the whole baking what cookie. What kind of crazy scene. you got over there? Space magic. Cookies. I like the whole baking <laughs> cookie. Space thing. magic cookies. <laughs> I like the baking cookies thing because it's just it's it's like it's this own little thing. If I had to get all or like a bunch of loot from this whole, you know, process, it's basically another reward layer where I'm eventually just like shoving stuff into this thing. It doesn't feel exciting. It's it's the equivalent of turning stuff in at a vendor at that point. You know how we had to turn tokens in for that whole year, basically, to get loot. Mm, those yeah, are the I days. agree, but I also disagree <laughs> in that when I bake a cookie, what I have is a recipe that turns out a specific item mm-hmm. that I could then use. Like, it, if for instance, I could, you know, I could be farming Vex and machine gun kills and something else to get the ingredients I need to get outlaw to use as a perk on a weapon, I think that'd be incredibly useful. I think that would be cool. I don't really like it in Destiny. Why is that? It, it's too much of... And if, if there was, like, trading in a marketplace where, like, you could do that, where it's like, hey, I'm going to make this weapon and then, like, sell it, I feel like that would be better. But the fact that it's, like, a multiplayer game where... Hey, look at this roll that I got, and like you can be jealous of it. But then if it's like, hey, look at this roll I got, it's like, yeah, I can go make that. Yeah. It just doesn't. It doesn't inspire the same excitement. Yeah, if it was, I, if it I was see, very specific suppose- to make things, then I, I don't think I'd like that. But like, like okay, right now being able to carry around a like a, a backpack oven to make any weapon, like I don't think I would like that either. But the whole forge concept, I think, is really cool. So if they took what we have with the forges right now, or God forbid, resurrect Brother Vance's role in forging, and have to or use the gunsmith, maybe. True, yeah, gunsmith would be nice as well. So let's yeah, have let's actually have a, a few collection spots. Okay, the weapons. Yeah. So like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, if they if they made it so they could rotate the type of weapons that you could get, but I don't think there should ever be a way to, for sure, put in a recipe that's going to give you outlaw rampage or whatever the meta is, because what if you that could reduces for sure the chase. Put in outlaw, but the rest of the role is random. Nah, the hunt for RNG yeah. is what's exciting. It's also frustrating. Of course, but that's RNG. There's literally no way to get yeah. the same result of, oh my God, I got the Gallahorn without having the, oh my God, I'm never going to get the Gallahorn in there. Like, you don't need every every gun in the game to be made this way, but it'd be cool for guns that come out of something called a forge to, for you to have some impact on how they're forged. How much would you use the forge after you after you've like gotten exactly. the weapons that you want from? How your much forge? am I going to use the forge anyway? I mean, Let's I've be been hitting the forge yeah, pretty that, hard. Point. Like, yeah, like yeah. I, I feel like you would you would make the things that you want to make, and then you're going to be for the most part done. And then uh, I'm going to find the two or three weapons that are really good out of the forge, grind mm-hmm. for pretty good rolls, and then be done with the forge. Because mm-hmm. okay, the, the forge is. If there was more variety of interesting things to chase after, then this the the, the question it, it would be different. It would be in a different light because it would be like, well, you need lots of different variety of different stuff for different occasions because you want to do these complex builds. But right now, yeah. it's just all damage. There's six weapons mm-hmm. in the forge, three of which I want plus one exotic, I guess. 
And two of those, really, I'm looking for an awesome role. But I'm not like, like they're not so different than anything else I got that I'm like committed to getting it either. Right. Yeah. That- Honestly, the best weapon, the one I really want comes out of the raid. Threat level? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Like the hand cannon is nice, but like Man, not you, like super. Can you hear that disappointment in Briar? Just like <laughs> I hear it resonating. Every <laughs> not having threat level. I'm sorry, Briar. It's true. I don't have threat level. You can always inspect me to look at mine. But what I'm what I'm really like getting at is that <laughs> the forge. Like, what am I looking to get out of this forge? I mean, I have I have an almost perfect roll on the heavy machine gun. Like I can't imagine getting a better roll on that. Hmm. I didn't get a perfect okay. roll. I'm still, I'm still, I, like I would like to grind hammerhead. Yeah, I got a pretty fucking great roll on that. Nice. Yeah, I. Uh, I hear you, Briar. Uh, my, 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 that's my same. That's my same question to you, Briar. Like, what are you wanting out of, like, the content? What, what exactly? Is I suppose it that that gets back at the question I had earlier. Yeah, I'm yeah. Not, I'm not the answer to that question is yeah uh zen y z says any armor from year one you still equip based on cosmetics so and do you do you equip any armor from year one still no 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 there's been a few times though that i thought about resurrecting the pumpkin yeah Yeah. i can see you doing that (laughs) that'd be kind of a fun throwback (laughs) pumpkin's fun like, it would be purely cosmetic to do so because the perks aren't as good. Yeah, that's the thing. Uh, like no. the perks, the, they've moved on. I mean, Miles Ganyan says, if you could move an exotic to a different slot, primary, special, heavy, what would you move, and how would you it change? How would it change to match its new ammo type? A good example would be Polaris Lance and Whisper of the Worm. Queen Breaker's bow to energy. Reduce aim assist and keep the same functionality. <laughs> like that. Okay. I feel like that solves. Okay. And Aldrin gives it to what, you for what free. What does it do, Holt? Like, why is what, what's that self? It 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 is literal only place in the game is a weapon to use to invade and gambit. Uh huh. And it does that because it has a stupidly high aim assist. And I feel like, hey, maybe so, if this was an energy weapon that you got to use a little bit more, uh, maybe you could also use the other perk on. Did you know it does stuff other than get headshots? Blinds what? people. I no it bl- yeah, it blinds, blinds people. people. Yeah. Which is insane. It's yeah. hard to blind somebody who's already dead. Yeah. They're, they're pretty <laughs> blind at that point. In, in fact, blinded by I think death. they're in a be- <laughs> when they're blind. <laughs> You know, I would rather them just be body shot because then they can't see. Whereas if they're dead, they can still give perfect information and call outs. Oh, oh I guess your screen true. gets covered up even in your death screen. No, it doesn't. Oh, OK. That That's the point is like, oh, I killed them. Well, they're going to know where exactly where I am. And if they're on a team, they can give call outs. Interesting. No, it's just like, I don't know, Queen, the Queen Breaker back in back in vanilla. It was like it was an energy weapon cool and like it had this higher ammo count and you know it was a it was this cool weapon to try to learn how to use well in, in D, d2 it's a heavy weapon and you know it doesn't it doesn't really have the necessary power of a heavy weapon outside of this one very very specific scenario it's true and all on honestly when it first dropped for me i was kind of surprised that it was in the heavy i thought it would it was going to be an energy um I think it would just make Gambit even more worse than what sure. people complain about, personally. Uh, I would take Telesto and move it to Heavy. I think that would solve quite a bit. I think that's a good... Agreed. Yeah. Like, good one. What, give, it, what, give it a what huge damage buff. Then? Well, it, it does too much damage. Yeah, just straight up. It like it, it, Where? Where? Well, in the Crucible, right now, for sure. Like, right now, right, it has infinite range right? yeah, in Crucible. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it has no drop, like because you can shoot it on the ground or mm-hmm. do whatever. Because the actual like hit damage is not very much; it's the explosion. Yeah. Also, I think it'd be cool if it was heavy, because then you could have a heavy fusion rifle like that. That's like a legit fusion rifle. It's a spray, not just a linear. 
and it would do extra damage and it would be the Telesto with it could it could have insane range and had insane damage so because it's heavy. It, right? Yeah, it could be buffed. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Absolutely. I agree. Yeah. It would yep. need to be buffed because yeah. yeah. Oh, for sure. Right, but still, you like then you have like a legit fusion rifle, not a linear, a legit fusion rifle that has a cool perk in the heavy that's going to do insane damage, and then you could still be running threat level and Kindle Orchid or something. Would you, would you actually use this in your heavy slot in PVE though? Uh, on Void Week, hell yeah. Okay. So it's strong enough, yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's uh, that's. I don't know. That's basically my thing. Is like what you we do okay. need a Here you go. Hold. exotic too. I got you. So in okay. in addition to damage buff, it would also apply the same thing that Code of Commander applies on uh, on damage from its uh, abilities. That sounds that sounds. Busted as hell. Let's have it. That's fun. Busted <laughs> the hell is fun. Great. Uh, so that one K. So the sole reason for this change is it's annoying to play against in PvP. Uh, no, because also like I find myself not interested in using it when it's just mm-hmm. a special weapon. Like if okay. it did more damage as a heavy, I think I would actually consider it more it, on, more often. It does pretty good damage as a special, but yeah. But again, I'm gonna use a primary and a shotgun or a sniper. Yeah. Well, see, I think it's not that it doesn't do enough as a special. Mm-hmm. It's that legendary heavy weapons suck. <laughs> like there's. Oh yeah. They're no, finally that's... adding machine guns, mm-hmm. and at least those are better. But yeah, that, yeah, I think that's, that's another issue. That's always been an issue yeah. in D two. D one so... wasn't an issue because we had rockets with tracking and. Stuff. So if we had better legendary weapons in PVE. Yes. Then this wouldn't be as big of an issue. Yes. Okay. So I'm actually going to take a weapon out of the heavy slot. Mm-hmm. I'm going to take a thousand voices, make it a primary. <laughs> and the like main perk it. I'm going to add to it is unlimited frames. All right. That, do, that does nothing now, sadly. It could. It could. <laughs> this is bright <laughs> fantasy. About, Don't crap on about, his fantasy. I'm reaching a hand out to my console brethren here. <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. How about, how about you take it to a primary and the thing you buff is you bring back that audio glitch that just kills the person's ears that it... Oh, you deafening. remember that? It, could, <laughs> it just yeah. deafens your opponent. The old deafening perk. Hmm. It could masterwork. It deafens people. I like it, man. I like Let's it. Let's do it. I like it. Uh, Travis says, what would be a deserving present for our pool for this Christmas? The for, edge for what? Transit, what was it? The edge train... The burnt, burnt edge transit. Ed, burnt edge transit was pretty hilarious. What was the question? What would be a deserving present for Rahul this Christmas? Oh, for Rahul. I thought you said for our pool. And I'm like, I thought you said that too. I no, didn't it's like picked up on Rahul afterwards. <laughs> pool or a pond. Pond. Is I, I didn't realize people got <laughs> gifts for pools. And they really are. Those really are big, like uh, things to get invested into. Um, hmm. You're punching the goddamn mouth. How about that? <laughs> this is like off topic, but isn't it kind of weird that he doesn't really have a purpose anymore? Because there's no decrypting engrams. They all just I mean, auto. You take your prime engrams to him. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's it. And yeah. even then, man. He's right? shaders. <laughs> it's like, why do I have to go to Rahul for the primes? Hmm. I think he's padding it. I hate, I hate that motherfucker. Like, you didn't like when he used to make your legendaries blue? If I had two bullets and Rahul and Aldrin were standing in front of me, I'd shoot Rahul twice. Same. <laughs> yeah, because Aldrin doesn't remember anything, and he's going to be the homie now. <laughs> yep. That's why. Eric email says, which NPCs are on the naughty list and which are on the... Cut out. Naughty list and nice list, right? Yeah. NPCs. Okay. Uh, let's go through them. Uh, Zavala. Naughty or nice? Ambivalent. Naughty. No, we'll go naughty. Yeah. <laughs> naughty. naughty. All right. Uh, Ikora. She's on the good list. Yeah, she's, not, she's, she's all right. Yeah. All right. Benedict. Oh, the bot? Uh, I think yeah. about that for a second. <laughs> naughty list. Yeah, I definitely put him on the naughty list. <laughs> I'll put him on the nice list. He's... He sold He's filthy cool. Walmart yeah, coos, man. Yeah. No, no, he nice. helped, he helped. I like I like Benedict. He helped me out <laughs> leveling, you know, He's during sweeping and stuff. Yeah, keeping he the tower clean. Leveling. Tess Evers. Oh, pfft. 
She's not even like even considered. She's off the list. She doesn't get the respect of a naughty list. I don't know. She had a she had a good comeback. She was terrible, you know, in the first half of year one, but now she's amazing. I just get she out will, all her stuff for she free. will not shut up about Finn Church. It drives me crazy, man. <laughs> I really, I really don't think she respects Finchers, Finchurch enough for like all the work that he's doing. He's he's giving her her entire business. If Finchurch yeah. goes away, like, well, they're she's a team, nothing. Right? Like they're two pieces of the same business. Wait, well, is she thing, actually is Finchurch? She's... No. What if Probably no not. word from Finchurch? I've never seen her leave the tower. <laughs> <laughs> what if no word from Finchurch is her not having a split personality? And no Finchurch that day. Mm. Ada. Uh, I'm going to say the good list for Ada. I'm going to say good list too. She showed a lot of like uh, growth in welcoming guardians and, you know, kind of being okay with it, I guess. She's, she's, she keeps flip flopping a ton where she's like, I'm sorry, we don't have more for you guardian. And then like the very next time she's like, what the fuck do you want? She just, hmm. She's really rude, but she's also like really nice at the same time. You get a look into her story; it's crazy. All mm. right, I, I'll I'll have to. I'll watch her. She's like a she's like an eight year old. <laughs> really, she's like an oh, no. old person. Yeah, okay. she has like a really the black armory uh, lore is like insane. Wow. Basically, her whole family was uh, killed by the risen, which was like us before we were guardians. Mm. Really, wow. that's deep. Aldrin. Good list. He's been a good boy. <laughs> I mean, like you saw that cutscene. Like he's been his his slate has been wiped clean, right? Yeah. He's basically like a uh, a new infant at this point. Like, are you really going to put a brand new baby again? Holtz. He's been baptized. They, all his when you been become, washed away by the ghost. When you become a guardian, you're not a vegetable man. You don't have to relearn like literally everything, like how to eat. You just you you have memory loss. Yeah. Also, he I can't died. Think of another one. And we got an interesting Amanda one. Holiday. Good list. Nice. She uh, yeah, Amanda Holiday. I'll, I'll say good list. <laughs> Asher Mir. <laughs> Fuck that guy. Yeah, naughty <laughs> list. Um Arak Jalal. Also not even on a list. He's just been <laughs> he left. I don't know. I feel like he's misunderstood. I think Santa knows that underneath it all, he's actually a pretty good guy. He didn't want to make faction rallies like this one week event, but they ended up happening that way. Like he he really re- would have rathered the events or like the faction rallies. Like no, no, we're not having rallies. We want we need support for more than just a week here for our cause. Like this needs to be a year round thing. No, okay. Wayne says <laughs> having to unlock three forges on three characters within such a short amount of time has angered some of the community. What's one repetitive activity that you wish you only had to do once in your life and never have to repeat? So this is outside of destiny. Taxes. What's one thing? Mm. Ooh, that's a good one. Mm. <laughs> I was gonna go with sleep, but I might actually change my answer to that. Sleep is delicious. Taxes suck. Sleep is nice, but imagine if you had eight hours uh, of every day extra. Yeah, that's interesting. I could find a use for that. <laughs> hmm. Like paying taxes. Yeah, you could do taxes in that. You only have to pay taxes once a year, and that takes like eight to sixteen hours. Yeah, like I value my dream time, man. I value the off button. I turn it off, wake up, I'm like, oh, there's the solution to the problem that I was having. Easy. You value it, but you need it. Like if you didn't need it, would you value it as much? I think I'd go crazy. Let's let's assume that you don't need it, right? Like okay. your psychological, your mental and physical health are going to be affected by the fact that you're not sleeping. Hundred percent more time would be awesome. That would be amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Filling my car tank or my you my car so with gas. Stop. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go with filling my car tank? with gas. Holt, I think I you need you. to reconsider that one, man. It's yeah. 2019. You know, it's around the corner. Electric cars aren't around the I'm around just the saying, you might want to swap that. Have to re- we might want to swap that with electrical bill. still going to have to put electrons in the car or whatever, man. Yeah, you just plug it in when you get home, though. It's not that big a deal. That's it's still, like plugging in your cell phone, mm, except it's your car. Mm. Angie, what's DMV, the right answer here? Never want to do that again. DMV does suck. That does suck. Every time. Yeah. I, 
I guess I'm gonna. This is a pre-podcast discussion coming on the podcast. I guess I just consider my, myself privileged. I've never had to wait at the DMV. Do you have a car? Y- yes. <laughs> Do you you have a license? How have you avoided waiting at the DMV? I I have walked in and there was maybe one person in front of me and I got shit taken care of like immediately. This is both in Seattle and in yes in Seattle too. Yes. Holy shit. I think you, you live a charmed life. You have <laughs> amazing DMV RNG. Uh, anyway, Ringo the Dingo says, it's the season of the balls. Why are the gambit, gambit moats still triangles? Because they would roll around too much and they'd probably fall off the map. Nailed it. That would be... Very fucking. Yeah, you know, annoying. you know how you know how annoying it is to chase around that little like that last orb of light that you need to get your yeah. super, and it's just rolling down a hill. Oh. Yeah. Now imagine that with gambit Did, things. In Destiny One, didn't Engrams used to roll off a hill? They oh, they still do. Yeah, they still do. do. They? I've had it happen. I just don't see it too often. All right. Zachary Richardson said, "Would you rather live in a cyberpunk universe or a steampunk universe?" Cyberpunk. I'm gonna go with steampunk, just because cyberpunk. I brought. I, I, I'd fuck something up, and like in the act of buying McDonald's, I'd give over my entire like identification, and like someone would hack into my brain. Brain hacks. And, like I, I, I just mm. be done. That Whereas is concerning. With, with steampunk, I mean, goggles, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, goggles. I goggles. feel like. I feel like I'd be okay in a steampunk universe, but in a cyberpunk universe, I'd be like way behind. <laughs> yeah. Like if I just got transferred there right now, I'd be like, I can figure out this gears and steam shit. Oh, you but get, the cyberpunk shit, I'm like, Whoo, you just get dropped into the universe? Well, yeah. Is that what it, yeah? Hmm. Yeah, sure. I mean, if that's the case, then I think I'd have to go steampunk also. But like if I'm living in that particular universe, I'd prefer cyberpunk. Um, I did actually get a document. Maybe I'll share this offline with you. I'll share this off. Okay. Oh, okay. It's from Hugo Rune79. Uh, and it's the title of it is DCP Twitter question loophole avoidance document. <laughs> and it's about seven paragraphs. Wow. <laughs> so maybe I'll just share this with you. Yeah, offline. we'll do that. It's a four that one to me. Hugo's a fucking funny guy. <laughs> it's just really long. I don't know. I can read it online. Speaking of Hugo, his next question. You're writing your Tinder profile. Okay. Your personal Tinder profile. Okay. Mm-hmm. Using Destiny 2 weapon names or perks, describe yourself and your ideal partner for the purposes of this question. You are all now single and your real life spouses cannot get mad at your answer. Hmm. I feel like a lot of these can go back to last week's fart joke answers. Yeah. Like, Explosive payload. <laughs> Full choke. Full choke. <laughs> oh my god. It's amazing. <laughs> it's a tough one. It's what a lot of thinking goes into yeah, this. That's a, that is a tough one because you like think about all the names of stuff. Yeah. Huh. Full choke was Full fucking choke is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Mohican Nine says, "Would you rather have a partner that wakes up before you and uses the snooze button five times, or to wake up to one that chews their flu- food loudly?" So you got two two choices here. You have to have a partner who either hits the snooze button five times every morning before you wake up, or B, chews their food very loudly. Well, it's before I wake up, so I haven't woken up, so I haven't heard it, so I don't care. Loophole. Got mm. it. This is Going actually my life. My wife wakes up at like 5 a.m. and hits mm-hmm. the snooze button like five or six times. And I think I wake up because of it like once a month. Huh. So it's actually not that big a deal. <laughs> yeah. You're a heavy sleeper. Ninji. You, you'll am. eventually and learn that like that sound of their alarm isn't one that you need to concern yourself with. Right. So you it's never, not, just, you it's never not wake a wake up. up alert. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I'm going to go with the alarm. Yeah. Ninji? Yeah, same. Alarm? Easy. People really don't like loud chewers. <laughs> no. I don't even mind a loud chewer, but like the alarm. I don't know. I want to eat with her every day, though. 
<laughs> I guess, or like, even if it's like, like if I dated somebody or if I married someone, ate one food like Doritos super loud. Huh. Like, all right, so Doritos are gonna be loud, but like if it was like every fucking meal, she's like, dude, that would suck. She would start a YouTube channel and become really popular with ASMR. Yeah, like ASMR. <laughs> <laughs> I like how ASMR went from like kind of this relaxing kind of, you know, tingly feeling that you get to just like it just it just went full on, you know, fetish. Just it just yeah. went, yes. Yeah, that's some weird ASMR out there. Okay, I started eating like a what? sandwich and like- I started eating a sandwich on stream yesterday and putting like chips in the sandwich so there'd be a big oh, bunch. Yeah. I have yeah. never Boop. seen so many loot emotes in my chat before. <laughs> really? Yeah. I don't know if that says something about your chat or about you. Full choke. I wouldn't That's the one we need to know. Full choke. <laughs> 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 That's all we needed. <laughs> all right. Last week we had a question about would you rather eat 15 pounds of crawfish with Patrick mm. or 15 pounds of uh what was it? Candy corn with Tefty. Right. So we, we got a different question, but along similar lines from its ax, would you rather eat 15 pounds of crawfish with Patrick or drink 15 pounds of shower beers with Briar? Shower beer, but you have to put swim trunks on. Done. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's, that's a lot of beer. Are you guys okay with like peeing in the same shower, or are you guys gonna have to leave the shower? I'm gonna hop out, use the bathroom, right. hop back in. Get cold. I, I don't think anybody will ever know. We're in the shower. That's true, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Andy got Andy got shorts on. Right. Andy got shorts on. So <laughs> water's already warm, so it's not gonna feel any different. Yeah. Uh, Ninji. Uh, definitely shower beer. There that it sounds, is, man. That sounds super fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got our guardian compliance then. <laughs> <laughs> Drew Jarvis says, if you had a gun with two... Oh, this is the last question. Last question of the night. If you had a gun with two bullets and you were in a room with Hitler, Aldrin, and Toby, who would you shoot? Toby from Office? I think so, yeah. <laughs> Describe Toby's character. I haven't watched The Office. Uh, oh, he was the HR manager. Yeah. He, okay. They serve an important role. Yeah. 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 It's kind of tough to describe Toby. He's okay. tall. <laughs> blonde. Um sad looking. <laughs> yeah, he's always sad looking. Always kind of like monotone. The the important thing is that Michael Scott absolutely hated him. As if he yeah. was the devil. But I didn't. I thought. No. I thought he was great. So I'm killing. Hated Holt, him. I'm killing Hitler and Aldrin, man. I'm. You, you, you always live. said Holtzman. I heard that Freudian slip. What am I gonna do? <laughs> Nick, I need you to. Nick, I need you to edit that. I heard Aldrin. I, I, slow it down for me. Definitely sounded like Holtzman. Yep. Yeah. That's right. The the fan theories are that Toby was the serial killer, right? I don't believe that. Scranton slash. He wasn't the Scranton strike. This, Strangler, Strangler, whatever it is. Strangler? No. Strangler or Slasher? I can't remember. He was a Scranton oh, wow. Strangler. Was, no, Toby wasn't that. I don't know. He was he was kind of a creep. Kind of like, you know, hit on Pam. I thought, like, I don't even watch The Office and I know that Creed was the Scranton Strangler. They never actually said it in, at least I don't think anyways. They, they never confirmed it in an episode who was actually mm-hmm. the Scranton Strangler. Creed was the hero of that show. Like he was showing you how to live your life. Like how could he be a serial killer? Apparently, he was explaining in no uncertain terms. Apparently, Creed was in easy steps to follow. Creed was telling you how you should be living your life. Apparently, Creed was homeless and not actually Creed. He like assumed the identity of that blows my theory away. Of Creed. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'd kill Hitler, obviously, because Olgen's going to be the homie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, you got two bullets. Are you going to one to the chest, uh, one to the head? Is this Olgen pre or pre or post? Uh, you know, resurrection. Uh, resurrection. Uh, yeah. Spoilers, by the way. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> 
I'm I'm shooting Hitler, and I don't yeah. know who Toby is, but I'm taking him down. Ah, Damn, Toby's getting Damn. it. Well, I, I like Aldrin. I think he's always been misunderstood. Yeah, man. Cold blooded. You don't even know Toby though. You're just like yeah. fuck that guy. That's kind of how like weirdo. that's kind of how they present it in the show too, with or Michael Scott's opinion about him. Hmm. Shooting Hitler. Um, I feel like that's the only real choice because I haven't been given enough information on who Toby is, and you know, I'm 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 willing to let Aldrin, you know, give give it a second chance. You I know? can't believe there's two people that never watch The Office. Never mind in this podcast, but just two people. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I've tried, like it's just this cringy humor that I gotta get past don't the first season. Enjoy. That's, that's a l- mm. first season six episodes. I don't even do that with anime. If I'm not like interested, I don't in the first episode, have to watch you the don't. first season. I think you just start with season two. Yeah, you can do that too. But if you don't even do that with anime, then you don't watch TV. So maybe you shouldn't no, watch Office. TV. Okay, I mean, you can put it on a laptop. You don't own a TV? No. You own a computer screen that can pull up yes. Hulu or Netflix. Yes. Yeah. That is essentially TV nowadays. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've never watched it because I don't like Steve Carell. Oh. That makes me sad inside. Mm. And with, on that note, uh, thank you all for watching the 115th <laughs> episode. <laughs> We're gonna we're gonna end this one before any more bombshells get dropped. Uh, thank you all for tuning in. Do you want to find more of me? I am at Holtzman underscore YT on Twitter. Is that a Twitter. Top Gear joke? I feel like that was a Top Gear. What? I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Next person. Ninji, for- go for it. Uh yeah. Follow me on Twitter at Ninji with two Y's or Twitch uh, at Ninji. With two J's, one Y. Uh, what time do you usually start your streams? Uh, normally like 9 p.m. Nice. Pacific. West Coast. Time. Yeah. How, how long do you go for? What's it? What's a normal stream uh, for you? Like 10 hours. Nice. So nice long <laughs> stream. Awesome. How old are yeah. you again? 30. Fuck. I wanted to make like a <laughs> remark like man when I was young, but oof. Yeah. <laughs> Not yet. So we, are, we are in the same boat then. <laughs> uh, I am Tefty Teft. You can talk to me at Teft on Twitter. Catch my streams, twitch.tv forward slash Tefty Teft. I usually uh, am live around 6 p.m. West Coast time. And I'm actually going to be 36 years old at the end of this month. How about Happy that? Happy birthday. Thank you. What's your, what's the birthday? Like, what's the date? 29th, actually. 29th? Yeah. Do you get that's like a... um, birthday presents and Christmas presents? Nope, because I had a brother and sister. At the same time. And my parents were very sensitive about me feeling bad about having my presence combined at the same time, which was awesome. So I'd be like, yeah. I didn't get this video game I wanted. And then, boom, it showed up for my birthday. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, it was pretty clutch. Yeah. Although I'd, yeah. people would have birthdays in the summer and I'd be like, that must be nice. My twin boys have early December birthdays. Mm-hmm. And I think they'd prefer, I would certainly prefer if they had like an August birthday because... I Should feel have like thought the about that is bigger ahead of time. Okay, you could, but it wasn't really. You could pace out your gifting. Married into the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you pace out the gifting, but also like the budget is bigger, right? Mm-hmm. I guess it would be. Yeah. Per per gift. Okay, then next time you're about to drop into a life, think about August as a birthday. Mm-hmm. Also, choose a rich yeah. family so there's no budget. Yeah, a spring birthday would be nice too. <laughs> in a steampunk you know, universe. In a steampunk universe. <laughs> Yeah. No, no, no. Cyberpunk. May. You want all the cool gadgets, man. Come on. You're going to be oh, born into cool this cool universe. Gadgets. There's cool gadgets in Steampunk, too. But, all right. Yeah, but Cyberpunk's going to take the cake on gadgets. Let's be honest. I feel like I'm going to get my organs harvested in a Cyberpunk universe. They, get, they can so print out a new copy. It's easy. I feel like Cyberpunk is just more dangerous in ways I don't understand. Yeah. But, you, you know. Synthwave. Cyberpunk synth 2077 music. though looks awesome. I don't think there's a lot of synth music in in uh, steampunk. No, no, there's not. What kind of music is there? Like clanging, clackety mm. clangs. Industrial. <laughs> I might change my answer. <laughs> I'm Briar Rabbit. You can find me shopping at the local mall, possibly mm. Carhartt store. There's a couple of gifts I still have yet to get. If you see me, say hi and. uh We'll wait in line together. There you go.
<laughs> yeah. And thanks. Thank you all for tuning in this, this week. That was good Lord. Just end it. Thanks Bye. for watching guys. We're going to roll credits <laughs> and then be back to read out some subs. Awesome. <laughs>